Virginia Tech won the toss and deferred. So Virginia Tech will be kicking off in Boston College, and Matt Ryan will have the football first as we get set for the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. A gorgeous, gorgeous day in Jacksonville, Florida. And you want to talk about a far cry from a year ago. <laughs> if you were with us a year ago, it was cold and it was rainy and it was ugly. And this is a Chamber of Commerce Day in Jacksonville this afternoon. And we get set for the Hokies and the Boston College Eagles. Kevin Akins, Rich Gunnell back deep. That's Judd Dunleavy, the kicker for Virginia Tech. Who's going to head to the Orange Bowl? We'll find out in about three and a half hours. Here we go. Nice kick and deep. And it'll be a touchback. And BC will work from the 20 as we check in with the fourth member of our it's team. It's amazing how much these two teams have talked about that first game this week. And on the first snap, the handoff on the inside to Callender, who got about four. And Cam Martin made the stop. And let's check the Dr. Pepper starting lineups. And Matt Ryan's going to do the honors. Matt. On the offensive line, we've got five great players led by Gosder Sherless at left tackle. And at the skilled positions, we've got running back Andre Callender, who's done a great job for us all year, and Ryan Purvis at tight end, who's made a ton of great catches. Callender and Whitworth, the fullback, both in there, and now Callender spreads out to the top of your screen on second down. And Ryan to throw for the first time, swings it out of the backfield to his fullback. And he's going to be about two yards, maybe three yards shy of the first down. Third down coming up. And let's check the Dr. Pepper defense for Virginia Tech, and here's the head coach. I want to introduce you to what I think is a really good defense. We've got uh, defensive line that's playing very well, three seniors. Chris Ellis has played exceptionally well down the stretch. Two linebackers, Vince Hall, Xavier Deby. I don't know if there's anyone better in the country. Our secondary, they'll go to the ball. Uh, D.J. Parker's the senior back there and our leader. All right, coach, good job. Third down and three. B.C. on its opening march, and it's Ryan to throw. And he's got it complete. First down across the 30 after the 31. The Kevin Challenger. Pick up of about four. Matt Ryan, Bob talked about him. 6'5, 220. 24 and 6. And look at the numbers. School record that passed Doug Flutie in the studio with the guys. Yeah. 28, touch, uh, 28 touchdowns on the year. Uh, yeah, I think one of the great things about him is he can take a good team that Boston College is and make them great. So they can beat anybody on any given day when this kid is at the top of his game. He's in the shotgun on a first down for Boston College in its own 31. Play action. Matt rolls and throws and finds his man, the tight end Purvis, who we just talked about in the lineups, and Purvis got it out for nine yards to the 40. Paul McGuire has not only been outside the tunnel of Virginia Tech, he's gone camera bound again. Oh, I love it up here, and I can see everything. And just watching this young man throw the ball. You know, Greece, the one thing that you and I talked about yesterday, yesterday and, and today is the fact that here's a young man that here's a young man that just throws the ball short. I mean, he doesn't have to go deep with the ball. And it, so far, the first four passes haven't been more than six yards. Nice eye black, Pablo. First down for Calendar on the ground. I kind of like that, that huh? paper. I got kind of like that when paper up in up? front of the yeah, camera. That was good. Where we could just hear him and not see him. <laughs> I've already had several things blow out of the window up here in the booth, so weigh yourself down over there, Grease. <laughs> just remember, Christmas is coming. Be nice to me. I know that. I know that. Virginia Tech's defense. One of the best in the country, fourth in the country, in fact, number one in the ACC. But they got their hands full with number 12, no doubt about that today. They got back-to-back -back first downs. Tight end in motion as Ryan drops back to throw, and he's got a man wide open in the middle of the field, Gunnell. And he's become one of his favorite targets. I don't think he has a favorite target, no. though, because he's got four guys yeah. that have 50 or more catches. Yeah, he's got a lot of guys that he wants to throw to. And who is your favorite receiver? Well, it's whoever gets open from behind the defense. Five guys out. Throws it to the inside. Throws a lot of passes to the inside. The backs and the tight ends down the middle of the field catch a lot of balls in this offense. And guys, he is four for four on this drive to four different receivers. That's exactly what we've been talking about. And he's already got him in Virginia Tech territory, just inside the Hokie 43. Ryan to throw again. Here comes the heat this time, and he completes it anyway and got it down to the 35 of the flag flying in. Completes it to Callender. Xavier Dini, the captain of the defense, was draped all over Callender and. Uh, that might be what the call was. Could be an interference or a holding call. 
Jack Childress is our referee today. He's given Matt Ryan the options right here. And here's the call. Pass interference, number 11 on the defense. Penalty places the ball at the spot of the foul. That's an automatic first down. Here's what we were talking about. Look at the numbers that these guys have put up on the passes from Matt Ryan. Callender on the left is the leading receiver, and he is a running back. Well, Bob, he also saw the matchup. He had Callender on the linebacker, on the middle linebacker, and as soon as he saw it, he threw it. And that was the penalty on a DB. So it's first down. Purvis is the tight end. Here's Callender. He's got a big opening inside the 30 and still on his feet down for another first down. So right now, BC's doing anything they want. Well, what they're doing first is they're throwing the football. And by throwing the football, it's loosening up the defense where the running game is going to be open. But Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator, told us that we're, we're going to have to come out and throw the football. Good block there by the fullback. Eighth play of the opening drive of the ball game. Down to the 26-yard line of Virginia Tech. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Ryan throws right where the blitz came from, but it is incomplete. And Matt Ryan, the ACC Player of the Year, very aware of the importance of this game today. We've worked all year to, to put ourselves in this position this week. And uh, we, we've said from the start that we wanted to win an ACC championship. And, you know, the past 12 weeks have, have gotten us to this point, and now it's down to this one game. And, and if we win it, we've done it. And you know, that's it. You start working way back in the summer, actually work the whole offseason yeah. by yourself, and yeah. then the coaches come in in August, and now here we are in December and championship Saturday, and that's what it's all about. And here's Matt Ryan leading his team on the opening drive. This time, finally they got some pressure on him, and he throws it away. John Graves dumps number 12, but he got rid of the football yeah, to avoid the sack. One of the impressive things about Matt Ryan and what he does is he gets rid of the football. He's been sacked the, the most fewest times in the conference, only 18, yet they've thrown over 150 passes more than anybody else in the conference. Mr. Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator, former head coach at East Carolina, and running a very versatile offense here, the number one passing offense in the conference. And Bud Foster looking on the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech on a third down and 10. Ryan. Over the middle, crossing pattern, umpire trying to get out of the way. Callender trying to get to the first down marker, and he's about a yard and a half shy. So now let's see if they'll bring out the field goal unit or if they want to push this to the limit on the opening drive. They've consumed over four minutes, and they're coming out, so they'll bring out the field goal unit. The X Factor presented by City, and it is special teams. You know how special Beamer ball is. Yeah, the kicking game is, is always important, but Whenever you play Frank Beamer in Virginia Tech, yeah, well, look at they've got they got 11 guys up on the line of scrimmage and they'll be coming. Apanovichus to try a 35-yard field goal, 10 out of 15 on the year, and they blocked it, and they got it. Virginia Tech with the ball, going the other way is Orion Martin. Martin still on his feet across the 30 and out to the 37-yard line. Just like that. X Factor, special teams, look at the smile, another block kick to the Hokies. Well, this, this ball never gets up in the air, and this ball is on the kicker, not on, not on the defense is going to give it to them. But that ball was not up in the air, and all Martin had to do was just jump. He wasn't that high either. Hits him in the hands. He did the smart thing, took the ball, and then ran up field and picked up about 20 yards. So another big play by the Virginia Tech special teams. Block kick. Hokies take over on offense for the first time today when we come back. We started this uh, way back on Tuesday night and Wednesday night on the basketball and continued on through this week, this championship Jimmy V week. Here's Glennon hit from behind. That one took too long to develop. They fake. The end around, and by the time he got ready to pull the trigger, Tyrone Pruitt dropped him for a loss of four. Take a look up here. The action takes a lot of time or doesn't get the block on Pruitt and a sack on the first play of the game for the Eagles. Not the first play they were looking for, that's for sure. Here's Brandon Orr. 
trying to stretch it to the outside and doesn't get much. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper starting offense for the Hokies and showing one in the quarterback does the honors. Starting off up front, we're led by left tackle, senior, all ACC selection, Dwayne Brown. Got the skill position. The backfield is led by Bior and one of the best blocking fullbacks in the country, Calden Weatherford. And out wide, we have Fast Eddie Royal and Josh Feats Morley. You know, Fast Eddie and Feats <laughs> Josh will probably be in a pattern because it's third down at 15. Feats. Feats, I like that. I, I wonder if that's F-E-E-T <laughs> or F-E-A-T. So for some of the outstanding things he's done that's this right. year. But Lennon in the shotgun, third down and 15. Trying to not waste the opportunity afforded by the special team. Running down the middle, and Fast Eddie had it and dropped it. Eddie Royal had it at midfield and couldn't hold it. Well, this play was right in front of me, and I'll tell you what, that ball it was perfectly thrown. It was down and away, fast feet, feet, fast feet, feet. Had the best chance of catching the ball. And when you see this throw coming down the middle, watch, watch where the ball is, is placed. He is the only one that has a chance of getting the football. He had it in his hands, but when he hit the ground, the ball bounces out. Can't throw it any better than that. You can't, man. They almost blocked the punt by Bowden. It dribbles down, and it's going to take a great roll for Virginia Tech all the way down close to the 13-yard line. 54-yard punts. Josh, you want me to hold that football? No, I'm fine. He says, you got to say Boston College first, not Virginia Tech first. I said, hey, you tell me how to do my job? Kid's about eight years old, a big BC fan, see? <laughs> Let's take a look at our game plan. We've gotten going so fast here with a block kick and a good opening drive. Virginia Tech, two yep. for the price of one is the quarterback situation. Boston College, the Ryan Express. It was rolling along before that block kick on the opening it was, it was. This guy can uh, elevate his play. He, the first game, the last two possessions, took him on his back, took him down, won the ball game. They'll work from the gun on second down and 10. Ryan over the middle, wide open. Challenger, and he's got a first down all the way out to the 30-yard line. Boy, nobody home there. He got 16 yards and again thrown over the middle. I just think he has some great reads because what he does is he's looking for the matchups with the tight end and, and the running back. And once he sees that, then he sees his, his uh, receivers coming across the middle. I mean, he's a challenger. There was nobody on him. Challenger's 41st catch. They call him Daddy. He's 25 years old. He's been around a while. Virginia yep. Tech. Comes with a blitz. Ryan's going to run straight up the middle. He's got a first down and a lot more. And a nice slide at midfield. Yeah, everything I see about this kid, I like. I the mean, slide's even good. Yeah, he, and, and, he, and he can run downfield. He doesn't do it a lot. And he can buy some time for his guys. Watch as the whole offensive line is going to open up. Look at this right here. Look at this where he's got to run. He sees that the, uh, the routes are no good, so he just tucks it and runs. Virginia Tech stunning themselves right out of that play. They had the two tackles crossing, and it created a huge gap. Seven first downs are running for Boston College. Ryan throws where they're not. Callender has got another first down. And he's still driving inside the 35 down to the 32-yard line. Right now, the Hokies don't look like they want to tackle anybody. Well, you know what, Ness? This, this was so easy for him. Ryan saw the blitz coming from his left-hand side. And once he saw it, he saw the two blitzing guys coming. They don't have enough people to block. So all he has, he says, calendar coming out into the flat. He's all by himself. There's nobody there. And he just dumps the ball. That's why I said he throws where they ain't. Well, that's there's good, nobody too, there. to throw the, where they're blitzing from. Because, because if it's a blitz on that side, somebody's covering the, guy, covering the guy out of the backfield. And it's going to take him a little while to get there. In the 32, that is incomplete. Didn't have possession at the 29-yard line challenger and it was flowers coming. Missouri was not ranked nope in the top 25 beginning of the year Jeff Jabrzinski great job he's done in his first year as his Boston College team looking at an orange bowl if they can win this game today I love what you said to Jags yesterday at the ACC Legends luncheon coach you you inherited a veteran team with a really good quarterback. Congratulations on not screwing it up. He loved that. He loved that. So did the crowd. I said, I said, they were, 
Boston College was 10 and 2 last year. They had 17 starters back, but an outstanding quarterback who was uh, before the season was uh, deemed the uh, player of the year in the conference. And you came in and made 10, 10, 10 and 2. You didn't screw it up. <laughs> third down, best in the ACC in their third down conversions. Let's see if they can get this one here. Gallon got about four. Send out maybe the field goal unit or maybe not. This telecast of ESPN's College Football and ABC HD is presented by DLP HD TV. Well, fourth down and the offense stays on the field. Don't want to chance another block field goal. They yeah, try to keep the offense going here. Yeah, it's a long field goal, and it's, you know, you got a good offense, you pick up a lot of these. Well, it would have been about 46 yards into the wind a little bit as well. Ryan loads, fires high, and incomplete. Brandon Robinson, the intended receiver, that one sailed a little bit on that. Ness, he, I'll tell you, he just had to st stand up and fire. He couldn't see anybody else open and threw it as hard as he could. Hokies take over on downs when we come back. Coming up, Tyrod Taylor right on cue, number five, the freshman out of Hampton, Virginia. You guys have been pretty good with this so far. Sometimes you guess right. <laughs> Even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Yep. Okay. Here's the throw out in the flat. Josh Hyman, and Hyman does well after the catch, and he gets out close to a first down against the Boston College defense. And let's set that Dr. Pepper defense. Here's Joan Dunbar. On D-line, we have Ron Brace, the bodyguard, and our linebacker, myself. Jalon Dunbar, Bone Crusher. And our safety, Jamie Silva, Jim Thorpe, war finalist. Jolon, the Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher. <laughs> Second down and short for the Hokies. And Orr looks like he's going to have a first down, but let's wait and see on the spot. Yeah, maybe not. We might mark him a little bit short. Let's check in with Matt in New York. Matt. Central Michigan leads 21-3. All right, Matt, straight ahead with the quarterback. And needed about two feet, and he got about two yards. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, this uh, two-headed monster to quarterbacks worked well for Tech Rab, but it's obviously not as you know simple as throwing a different guy behind center. The line has to be used to the different cadence. Each quarterback throws a different type of ball. And Eddie Royal was telling me the big thing for receivers is that because Taylor's more of a scrambler than Glennon, they all have to remember the play is not over until it's whistled dead. Royal said Tyrod's great at making defenders miss, so we have to make sure to keep the routes alive because inevitably the defense becomes so consumed with him, we get open. It's time to keep it on the ground to Brandon Orr. Brandon Orr got about three. Alan Smith made the stop defensively. There's Tyrod Taylor. Yes, one of the things about Tyrod Taylor when he's in the ball game, look at, at DC's defensive. The, uh, the corners are off about 8 to 10 yards, and everybody is ganged in towards the middle of the field. They're waiting for the run. I, I don't know why they would want to try to run in the middle. Get the ball wide to the outside. Look how much room the receivers have, Bob. Two tight ends in as well. Play action. Taylor wants to throw. And does throw to one of his tight ends, but it's incomplete. I beg your pardon, it was intended for Orr and incomplete. <laughs> I think the main thing, Brad, about Tyrod Taylor is that, the, first of all, he's a true freshman. Frank Dima told us uh, during the week that only, only two of his recruiting class this year have even played this freshman. And Taylor is one, and, uh, and the defensive player is the other. The second thing is about, uh, about Tyrod, he, he's, he can run, he can scramble, he can make big plays, whereas, whereas Glennon can only make big plays through his arm, Taylor can make some big plays with his feet. See what he makes here on third down at seven. Sets to throw and does and completes it. And first down and a nice spin move. Josh Morgan got to midfield and did a little dip around the defense. And on third and seven, he got nine. You know, he may be a, he may be a freshman, Bob, but he's growing up fast. Here, Virginia Tech makes its first trip into Boston College territory. For the first down. And on the option. Oh, Tyron Taylor had it swiped from it. And J.D. Silva's going the other way. Boston College touchdown. Mark 
Kurzlik and Jamie Silva just stole that football and took it the distance. The inexperience of Tyrod Taylor, we just talked about him being a true freshman, playing for the first time this year. He's only started two ball games. Silva was a, is a veteran. You know, let me just tell you a little bit about old Silva. Jamie Silva, he leads the team in tackles with 110. He's got five interceptions, one and a half sacks, a forced fumble. Well, here's number two forced fumble that he took to the house. How good is he? It's his second touchdown of the year as well. The third finalist. And number 44, first team all ACC. And just gave a huge boost to the Boston College effort. Watch this play again. It's going to be an option, a fake to Orr right there. Now he's, he wants to pitch it. No, he wants to keep it. There is Silva right there, number 44. And how good is that? Just take the ball away and outrun the quarterback for the first score of the game. That doesn't hurt your fourth finalist award votes. That's you can see Herzlick is the guy that kind of popped it out. Then Taylor actually regained possession, but he didn't have both arms on it. Right. And there goes Jamie Silva, 51 yards for a touchdown. Uh, that's one huge. of those deals. So, I'm sorry, Buffett. That's one of those deals where you, you, know, you fake it out, you take it back, you got to take it back. <laughs> you got to take it back. That's uh, a huge score. Boston College getting on the board first. The underdog coming into this game, and their defense scores the first points. And you're normally talking about Virginia Tech's defense scoring touchdowns. Here it's BC's that does the trick. And there's the two quarterbacks, and there's the guy that just scored from 51 yards away. Eddie Royal and Josh Morgan will be back deep. Abinavichis will kick off. You see, that's a one-play scoring drive. Didn't take too long. Boston College defensively had done really well during the season on interceptions. They were um, fourth in the nation in interceptions with 20, so they took the ball away. Here's a kick. And it's going to go out of bounds, and that'll set up Virginia Tech at the 35-yard line if they choose to take the penalty, or unless they want to re-kick. John Glennon back in at quarterback for the Hokies. So he played the first series. Tyrod Taylor had something working until he coughed up the football, and now it's Glennon's turn again. Brandon Orr hit in the backfield, and he's going to lose about a yard. Robert Francois, the outside linebacker, made the stop. John Glennon. 15 and 5 as a starter, and he's gone all the way back to the LSU game. The last time he threw an interception, 142 straight pass attempts without a pick. And he's a fourth-year junior, so you've got the difference in quarterbacks. The two quarterbacks, one's a senior, he's a junior eligibility-wise. Fourth year in school, the other kid, Tyrod Taylor, first year at school. Second down and 11. Three wideouts for Glennon in the shotgun. Sean flips it and had it knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Jim Ramela. Frank Beamer knows that this game for his team means a lot for a lot of reasons. The uh, terrible tragedy we had and the, the come togetherness that I think our fans and players and, and everyone uh, with, connected with Virginia Tech and could end this thing up with an with a ACC championship and a trip to Orange Bowl. Uh, That'd, that'd make it real special. Yes, it would. The tragedy on their campus back in the spring. And all the players remember that, even with the old lunch pail on the Virginia Tech sideline. Glennon overshot his intended receiver. And Josh Morgan kind of pulled up on that one and almost like he could hear Jamie Silva coming. The Hokies have to give it up. So now BC will get the ball back with a touchdown lead. Second three and out already in the ball game for Virginia Tech. Not being able to get their offense in gear so far. Yeah, this Boston College defense is, is a little nasty. They're, they're second in the nation against the run. They're getting ready to block this thing. Look well, at these guys. They almost, they almost got the first one, Paul, and I mean really close. Roderick Rollins is the guy that almost got to Brett Bowden the first time. He gets this one away, but it's not a good kick. Unless it takes a great roll, and it may. It is going to dribble down around the 21-yard line. 
25 yard punt and no return. And Frank Beamer says, son, let me talk to you about this. I'm the coach of the special teams and I'm not crazy about it. First down for Boston College. And the handoff, Andre Callender upended immediately. Vince Hall came in to make the stop. Hall's another guy who did not play in the last encounter on that Thursday night in late October. Vince missed that one. He broke his wrist against Clemson. And he's had to battle back from uh, from that injury to be in the starting lineup again. Here he is getting tripped and still just getting the shoulder down and making the stop. I love what Vince had to do to get that wrist ready to come back. They made him play video games all day long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think he didn't love that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like being a tight end and saying, ask to move the tackle. Go eat yourself. Gain 40 pounds. Here's a throw and a good one by Ryan. It's a first down. Out to Brandon Robinson. He's run out of bounds by Harris, but a pickup of 11. You know, the amazing thing about it, when you're watching these guys come out of that backfield, they got five and six guys coming out. There's just no way to double up on anyone. You have to play man-to-man. -man. And that one time we saw Matt Ryan run up the middle of the field, they were in man-to-man. -man, and when you're in man-to-man, -man, you've got to turn your back to the quarterback and allows him to run. If I was this team, I wouldn't run the ball at all. Just keep throwing it. Now well, he's gone to six different receivers so far. And Boston College has had it basically twice as long as Virginia Tech here in this opening quarter. Here's a little draw play, calendar, and he's got a first down. His best run of the day. Well, this has been the M.O. for Boston College, moving it on the ground and through the air, but then they've stalled down and had one field goal blocked, and then went for it on fourth down. Their touchdown has come from their defense. If you just join us, a 51-yard fumble return. This is Ellis on the outside. Watch as they're not blocking him. This is the guy that gave him all the problems the last time. See how he let him run up the field. Ellis, the hard to even block him. That's Costanzo, the true freshman right tackle that had a, a lot of trouble with him in the, the first game. The blitz, he throws where the blitz came from again. And again, it's Callender out of the backfield. Loves to use his tailback as a pass receiver, and why not? As Bob said earlier, he comes in as a leading receiver on the team. Yeah, but not only is he a leading receiver, the guy is, is rushed for 885 yards. He averages almost five yards a carry, a carry, and he's got nine touchdowns just rushing the ball. And, of course, he was the guy, remember, as we said in the open, the game winner with 11 seconds to go. The first regular season go-around these two teams had. That was Calendar, who caught it in the end zone for the touchdown and the winner. He'll get the call on second down, and he's got another first down. Out of the 45-yard line. Uh, Virginia Tech, so BC's got their offense moving. Final minute of the first quarter. And Callender is doing it both as a receiver and a runner. Dad, there's an old saying around the offensive uh, meeting rooms is if you can throw the ball to your tight end and your back, you can move down the field and control the football. And that's what they're doing right now. They're going to have two backs in there as the fullback checks in. Whitworth back there with Matt Ryan in the shotgun. First down. Ryan waits and throws. Got a man wide open again. And it is Whitworth, the fullback. So he's using everybody. It's kind of fun to watch because so many guys, especially at this level, sometimes they get all zoned into one guy, and that's all they think about. And Matt Ryan right now is going, you blitz me from this side, I'm throwing there. Yeah. You come that way, I'm going there. Well, it's, it's all it's all controlled, too. He's got somebody to throw to. Five guys out. The three receivers went downfield. Both backs went through the line of scrimmage and went to the left. Sometimes they split. Sometimes they go to the right. Sometimes they run a halfback option. All, all these different things. That's the fifth time that they have thrown to a running back for a completion in the first quarter. So BC at the end of one by virtue of their defense is out in front in a battle for the ACC championship. Seven up at the Eagles in front. Four yards in the first quarter. And they've got second down here. They give it off on the inside, and that's Whitworth, the fullback, and he is going to get a first down, I think, or very close to it. So we're just about a few seconds into the second quarter. And that's the score we have in the ballgame so far. And now trying to get a first down is Matt Ryan, and it looks like he did. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper statistics through that first quarter, and it was controlled. The clock was controlled by Boston College as well as the scoreboard. 10.46 time of possession. Look at the total yardage, too. Wow. 
Big thing there is the, inter the uh, turnover, the fumble, the takeaway by Boston College and in for a touchdown. Ball's right in the thick of things at the 35-yard line. He gets to see on the line of scrimmage on every snap. <laughs> Ninth play of the drive for BC. Nice play fake by Ryan. Flushed out of the pocket. Lobs one to the sideline, incomplete. Just got rid of that one, and there's a penalty marker in the backfield. Now there's going to be a holding penalty. You know, Ness, one of the things that not, let us not forget about is this offensive line for BC. I mean, that gives Ryan that confidence to stand back there and find the guys that he, has to, he wants to throw to. But the most impressive thing about Matt Ryan is the fact that how quick he gets the ball away, Bob. He just throws the ball, I mean, as fast as ever. He, he sees his man so quickly. He knows, he reads the defenses, he knows if this guy's covered, this guy's got to be open, and he goes right back there. And again, uh, the offensive line, you've got to give him an awful lot of credit. When you see him in person, very tall, he doesn't seem like he's 220 pounds, especially when he's wearing a suit as he was yesterday when he got his ACC Player of the Year honors. But he's got a big time arm, and he will be a high draft choice in the NFL next year. And he's got things you can't teach, and that is, throwing the football away and not holding it or, or putting it up for grabs. This throw is high, though. I'd like to have that one back. Brandon Robinson, the intended receiver, and Matt knows he threw a bad ball. Speaking of Matt's, let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York, Matt. I know that they, they were, were trying to get an announcement out of Les Miles before that, the game. that he was coming back to LSU before the game, and they got it. Coming back or not going anywhere. Here's the throw, blocker out in front of Callender. Callender inside the 35, and he's got a first down at the 32-yard line. He's going to be about six yards short on this thing. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's right. The penalty had backed him up. So they get across the original line of scrimmage and down to the 31. It's a beautiful screen pass. I mean, they, this, this thing was set up perfectly. They only needed one more blocker downfield. They blocked everybody at the line of scrimmage, and it just allowed Callender to get down the field and almost pick up the first down. So it's a manageable third and seven after the pickup by Callender. And Ryan, as you look in from the blimp, has his team just inside the 32-yard line. Pump one way, comes back to Callender, and nowhere to hide that time. Loss of two, Virginia Tech. Smelled that one coming. Xavier Adibi made the stop the middle linebacker. You don't run two screens in a row. <laughs> that from a punter? Yeah. <laughs> that from a punter. You don't run two screens in a row to the same guy in the same place. Hello? Well, again, they're going to keep the starting offense out there. It would have been a long field goal try. It would have been about a 51-yarder. Remember, they already had one blocked in the first quarter. So on fourth down for the second time today. Yeah. And this one's fourth and nine. Ryan backpedaling. Got to get rid of it. Throws dangerous pass, and it's caught. Unbelievable. Rich Connell in a hole. Yes. Herd of Hokies. No, yes. it wouldn't be a herd of Hokies. It would be a flock of Hokies. <laughs> there were five of them. Ness, you're absolutely right. There were five white shirts around him. We get a good shot of it from the end zone. He's just going to he's going to roll out. They're trying to get him outside the pocket. Now, Ganell does a nice job of coming back to the ball, too. Look at him right here. He's got three guys around him, and he keeps coming back to the ball and just makes the play. And that was a heck of a throw, backpedaling and trying not to get sacked to pick up a 14 and a first down. Now Ryan on first down. Down the sideline and hits the defender, I think, right in the back, intended for Canada. Boy, Chancellor, Chancellor just knocked him out. I mean, knocked him out. Calendar still down. Cam Chancellor, big time safety, 6'3", 220. He hit him with a shoulder after the play was over. Uh, there, there, there's going to be some booing in this, baby. But you just take a look at the hit. Here's the throw. The throw right here is missed, and now what? Boom, he just lowers him. Wham! Right in the ribs. Cam Chancellor with the hit of the ball game so far. We'll check on Andre Kyleter when we come back. 
Well, the good news during our timeout, Andre Callender got up and ran across the field on his own power, but he really took a shot in the ribs. And just moments ago, the doctor was down there for BC with a stethoscope, pulled his jersey up, see if he was breathing all right. He's not in there right now. Whitworth, the fullback, will be in the backfield. All these players wear rib pads, so he, he did get hit under the arm, into the ribs, but if he was wearing the rib pads that give him that protection, he'll be all right. Second down and 10. Ryan pumps one way, now flushed out of the pocket. It's going to throw to the end zone on the run. Incomplete. Too wide, intended for Rich Gunnell in the corner. Our Pacific Life game summary so far today. It's been the... One of the great robberies of all time, if you're a Boston College fan. Matt Ryan, first of all, has put on a passing display. Already 21 passes in the first half. The defense that actually has stolen the show. Jamie Silva, number 44, a Thorpe finalist. 51 yards on the thievery. And the run to the end zone for the touchdown. Andre Callender's checked back in. Number 32's breathing okay. There he is. This will be the 20th play that BC will run in Virginia Tech territory already in this half. Look out. And Ryan's just got to get rid of this one. Incomplete. Xavier DB was bringing the heat. That brings up another fourth down, and fourth down has been mostly keeping the offense out there, but I think they're going to give the kicker a chance this time because he's a little bit closer. Yeah, and the wind is blowing left to right. Dr. Pepper ACC Championship here in Jacksonville or Boston College. The Atlantic Division champions leading the Coastal Division Hokies of Virginia Tech seven to nothing. And there's what we're talking about. Most of their day has been spent in Virginia Tech territory. Load up the middle, here we come. Apanovichus is gonna try a 37 yard field goal. Had one block already today. This kick on the way and it is perfect. So BC adds to its lead. 11 minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the first half, and the Eagles flying high right now in Jacksonville. So Matt Ryan has led his team to a field goal now. They lead 10-0. The kick to Eddie Royal, one of the great return men in the country, and the ACC return man of the year, and he got it out to about the 23-yard line. Bonnie? Well, Brad, Virginia Tech's been playing some inspired football since losing to BC back in October in parks. There's a whole bunch of seniors, also in part because of what's in this lunch box. Now, this is a lunch pail, I should say. This is usually a defensive thing, and it's got defensive goals, grass from big wins and stuff. Uh, but after the shooting tragedy in the spring, Bud Foster, the coordinator, decided to put the name of all 32 shooting victims in this lunch pail, and it has provided inspiration for every single one of the players on this team. They play with a little bit more pride knowing they're part of the healing process and Blacksburg. Imagine what Hokie Nation's going to be like if they win tonight. Boy, no kidding. And uh, obviously, that has a lot of meaning in that lunch pail. Flag flies in at the end of the play. I think we're going to have a personal foul maybe for a late hit. The lunch pail, you know, we talk about mascots, and last week we had Georgia and Georgia Tech, and that was August 6th. That's lunch pail 6. You know, the thing gets banged around. So since 93, they've had to have six different lunch pails. They had to retire the first five. And that one's pretty beat up, too. But. Well, I don't think they want a brand new looking one. No, they don't. you got to get an old one. Just, yeah, yeah, you got to. We have a dead ball foul. Right hit out of bounds. Number 52, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Austin Giles with that late hit, as we saw it on the sideline. And so tack 15 more out of the play. That will move the Hokies into Boston College territory at the 46-yard line. Boston College is the most penalized team in the conference. There's an Aflac trivia question for you. Who was Boston College's starting quarterback just before Doug Flutie? Think that one over. That's a good one. Yeah. Doug's probably the only guy who knows the answer to that. That's right. Except the guys in the truck down here. There's a throw incomplete nowhere near the intended receiver. Josh Morgan's kind of looking at Sean Glennon right now saying, where were you going with that one? That's not the way we worked on it in practice. No, not exactly. <laughs> There's Billy Flutie, Doug's nephew. He's uh, designated going around patting guys on the back guy. <laughs> He'll have his day in the sun. He may have to wait a little. Second down and 10. Hope he's looking for some points here in the second quarter. Glennon looks one way and fires across the middle, and that is caught on the ricochet by Greg Boone. Josh Morgan is the guy that tipped it, and then it was almost intercepted, and 
You hear the chance of Boone. Greg Boone converted quarterback. What an outstanding Eller, what an outstanding catch. I'm telling you, this, this ball's tipped up, and you show, it'll show you some great hands and quickness. He keeps his eye on the ball. He puts up one hand, it stags the ball, and then he gets wrapped and still holds on to it. Did he ever? Silva gave him a big time shot, but it's a first down, and now Tyrod Taylor's in at quarterback, and he'll run the quarterback draw. Taylor inside the 25, got about five. So they change things up right in the middle of the drive, as we've seen them do in the past. Tyrod better hold on to that ball with two hands. Well, the thing you don't want to do either is take away some of his aggressiveness. That earlier when he uh, when he when he lost the ball, it was it was an option. He got slapped and he was trying to get it back. So, but you don't you don't you want him to play and you want him to play all out. So get out there and just play the way you normally do. And second and five, they'll give it off to Orr. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Jolan Dunbar is the guy that made first contact. Reminder at the conclusion of our game today, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. So here's the biggest third down of the ball game so far for the Hokies. Third down in the yard. There's the bone crusher, Jolan Dunbar, the captain of the defense, a senior out of Syracuse, New York, making the calls, trying to get his troops to come up with a stop here. Two tight ends set. A third down and one, and it's Taylor. He'll keep it. Got to the corner, and now finds a place to land. Is it enough for the first down? And he might not have been aggressive enough, Bob. Yeah, that's he, what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, it looked it looked as though. He was, he could have made it easily if he would have went to the outside. Referee says first down, though, they're not going to bring out the stick, so he got enough. And defensively, what the Eagles want to do is they're, they're second in the nation against the run, so they can stop the Hokies' run. They want to force this, this two-headed uh, quarterback system to beat them through the air and shut off the run. He got what he needed, first down. Inside the Boston College 20. Taylor fires and incomplete. Intended for Andre Smith, the tight end. Nice play defensively by. Late flag, Brad. I did not see the flag come in on Silva, so maybe it wasn't a good play. Well, Silva had his left arm on his back, and that's what they're calling. They, they, he was a little early getting in there. But now they're going to have a discussion. I was wondering, when the guy throws a flag, wasn't there a reason you threw it? <laughs> Here it comes. Last interference, 44 of the defense. Penalty places the ball. It's a spot of the foul. That's an automatic first down. Jamie Silva saying, hey, wait a minute. I reached around with my right hand. He's not getting any love from the back judge back there. All right, when you look over here, you're going to see if, if his left arm is on his back right, right there. He's got him. That's pass interference. Or first down. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. This is a big possession right here. For the Hokies, if they can get in, they get back in the ball game. And if uh, Boston College can stop them and force them to kick a field goal, they a big move for them also. You know, Brandon always had some injury problems at times this year. Rushed for 97 yards the first time these two teams met. But he had a season-high 147 last week, but he's struggling today. Yes. Five yards on six carries. John Glennon's back in at quarterback. Second and goal, Virginia Tech. At the BC5, Glennon lost it to the corner. Morgan's got it. Josh Morgan, touchdown. Grace, I'll tell you, he makes, he makes one hell of a move in this end zone. He makes a turn to go back and look at the ball and make the catch. And the ball was thrown absolutely perfectly. That's the reason you can have two quarterbacks play and be successful. Watch well, this pass. Well, he's going against a true freshman, Gallus, number nine. Makes a nice adjustment, sees the ball. Good catch, good play. Judd Dunlevy in for the point after. And now we got a ball game. Now the Virginia Tech got their offense going. They were helped by a couple of penalties on that drive. But they cap it off with the extra point. And now it's Boston College 10, Virginia Tech 7. Josh Morgan, 16th career touchdown. And for him, 
his fifth of the year in the corner of the end zone in the ACC championship game. A 77-yard drive in eight plays helped by a late hit personal foul and a pass interference. Nonetheless, in three minutes and three seconds, Virginia Tech on the board now. 10-7, Boston College still with the lead. You know, and that helps an offense too, Brad. To get a couple of penalties, help the defense, so they help, the defense is helping us down the field. Thank you very much. There's a line drive kick. Somebody better get over there and snag it. Vanell picks it up on the return, and he got leveled at the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Down. Boston College with a three-point lead. Matt Ryan back to throw. Hit as he throws. Got it complete across the middle, though. And Callender, again, keeps making catches out of the backfield. Matt had to pay the price to complete that one, but it's a pickup of 11. And a first down. And is at least in consideration for that same award with a year he's had. Pump fakes and now flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Completes it out to midfield. Got it out to Megua. And that's going to be another first down. Bonnie? You know, Brad, watching the way Ryan spreads the ball around lends credence to what Steve Logan was saying about his football IQ. He said there are two types of quarterbacks, those who methodically go through their progressions and those who see the progressions to throw someplace else because of something they saw with their peripheral vision. Logan's only had two other guys like that. Jeff Blake when he coached in East Carolina, Rohan Davey when he was coaching NFL Europe. He said, please remember this. I always tell my quarterbacks you have to be a good defensive coordinator if you can't predict what they're going to do to you, you're going to get picked off all day. That's the true words were never spoken. I agree with that. Here comes a blitz. Ryan throws, and he threaded one in there. Tough catch by Megua, his second in a row, and he did it in front of Brandon Flowers and Vince Hall. And you talk about Doug Flutie back in the studio and the numbers Doug put up in his senior year, and look at how similar they are. 4,100 yards now for Matt, including what's going on in this game. Doug had that Heisman moment against Miami. And Matt almost had one against Virginia Tech Virginia first time Tech around. the first time he did, and, and who knows what this game will bring. Exactly. Votes aren't in yet, folks. Don't worry about that. And on the ground, Callender weaves his way down inside the 35. Got about six. Darren McFadden had a great game last week against LSU on right. national television. Last week of the football season for college, a lot of guys, Matt, uh, Ryan uh, included, have a chance, big stage, to go out and show what they can do. From what we understood this week, uh, ESPN and ABC, that about 10% of the Heisman votes have already been sent in. Yeah. And I don't know why anybody would do that, but that's their own opinion. You know, Bob and I, I'm waiting until tomorrow. Well, they have to be in by next Wednesday. Yeah, but you got time. And why not watch the last game of the year on Championship Saturday? I don't get it. But Ryan to throw again. Plenty of time. Flares it out. Oh, big hit put on Calendar again as he got to the sideline. And you can hear that one way up here. You know, the best, one of the best passes this guy has thrown, I, it, it can't be more than 15 yards. I, you just look at him, and you said it before, methodically go down the field. He just chips away and chips away and chips away. There's always a short guy, and not in stature, there's always a short guy open. I mean, it's, just, it's frightening. Callender's already caught seven balls in the first half for 64 yards out of the backfield. On the throw again, this one complete again. Justin Jarvis, and there's another new name as Matt Ryan continues to throw the different guys and moving down the field. Well, let me say something to you. Justin I'm Jarvis. watching Callender comes out of the backfield, and they got the linebacker on him who's the inside linebacker. So what Callender does, he just walks out, goes to the outside, and then the, the, the slant pass is perfectly open. They moved it down out of the 14-yard line. So talk about answering a good-looking drive by Virginia Tech. Boston College has got it rolling again. Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator there. Ryan, five for five on the drive. Another shotgun. Matt going to run with this one. Heading toward the end zone, and he got there. Touchdown, Ryan, on the ground, not through the air. 
Had a career-long run in the first quarter of 19 yards. That one's 14 for the touchdown. Well, when you see him running this, I'll tell you, it's amazing. He's coming right at us, and watch when he hits about the five-yard line. Once he hits the five, there's no question he's not going down. He's going for the touchdown. Take a look at it. He's going to see the defensive guy split. He gets a block at the two. He say, hey, I'm going. Touchdown. He threw it to Megwa twice in that drive, and then Megwa said, I'm going to give you a little love here, quarterback. I'm going to throw a block for you. And the extra point is blocked. Virginia Tech trying to pick it up and go the other way, and they might have a chance. Here's an extra point return. You don't see this very often. That's two points for Virginia Tech. Brandon Flowers goes the length of the field. Second block kick of the day. Wow. A little bit of everything here in Jacksonville. I think it's right there in the middle of the line. He jumps up. Yeah, the kick was low. The defender was high, and it was picked up two big points. Wow. Corey Robertson blocked it. Brandon Flowers bloomed all the way down the field for two. So that was a strange turn of events. Really, when you think about this game, it had not been for a blocked field goal. It should be 20 to 7. It's 16 to 9. Yeah. <laughs> it was the pencil away. Yeah, exactly. Matt Ryan with a touchdown run today. Yes. And his yes. season done, of course, because of the knee injury. Sean Glennon at quarterback for Virginia Tech. As they continue the musical chairs of quarterback, he's the guy that's thrown a touchdown pass for him today. And he's lofting one long. And he's got a man out there, and it is intercepted by Silva. Jamie Silva playing center field. He's got a fumble return for a score, and now he's got an interception. Well, let me tell you what. It's just You watch this young man, Silva, go up in the air, and it is just perfect timing. He, they said, you know, when they first saw him, you talk about a football player, ball sense, knows where it's at. He goes up at the high point of the ball, and he's not that tall. He's only 5'11", but he goes up and just takes the ball out of the air. Sixth interception of the year for the fourth award finalists. And he's he's pretty, making some plays today. Isn't he's he? had a pretty good day. One of, those, one of those six interceptions he returned for a touchdown. And if you're not with us earlier, he took a, a fumble recovery away and returned it for a touchdown. And it turns the ball back into number 12's hands. First down. Ryan screen pass thrown and completed. They used that quite a bit today. Got out to about the 42-yard line. Andre Callender's got it. This is the third year of this game. Here at Jacksonville, and it's the only, the first time that we've had a, a team that has repeated. Right. Virginia Tech was in the first game against uh, Florida State. They lost that one two years ago. Today, they're trailing, but by only a touchdown, thanks to the blocked extra point returned by Brandon Flowers the length of the field. Under four and a half minutes now remaining. Boston College has its full complement of timeouts. A third down and two right here. Hokies bring the blitz. Ryan completes the pass. Gunnell still on his feet. First down. It's just pitch and catch right now. And that moves it back into. Throw some balls, loosen up. They were just drinking Diet Pepper. They didn't want to screw it up by having anything else out at the zoo last night. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> But we won't comment about what we were having while we were at the zoo last night. I was over talking to the elephants. <laughs> Second down and nine. We've had an active couple of days down here in Jacksonville, I'll tell you that. They can get you to do some things. You, know, you ever worked that hard in your entire life? It's, it's, been a, it's been a long 48 hours, that's for sure. Second down and nine. Leveled as he throws by Cam Martin. Oh, Cam Martin takes a run, and no one even slowed him down. He just came, came from the blind side. Matt Ryan never saw him, never felt him. And just as he cocks to throw the ball, he's going to get hammered. Watch this. Nobody touches him. Look at it. He's getting ready to throw, and that ball is 
every once in a while, a good quarterback, a smart quarterback, who knows what's going on, will, will, will not see a blitz coming from the blind side. Bud Foster says, I like that. Give me 10 more of those. <laughs> Third down and nine now. They back out of the blitz this time. Ryan fires complete to the 40, but it's way short of the first down to Megwa. And they might go on fourth down again here because you know how the kicking game has gone so far. Even extra points have been an adventure. And this is way outside of the field goal kicker's range. Reminder coming up in a little under three minutes. Sirius Satellite Radio Halftime Reports. John and Craig and Doug will have highlights of Conference USA and the MAC Championship. They'll look ahead to Missouri and Oklahoma coming up tonight. They'll talk about the Heisman a little bit more. All that coming up two minutes and 40 seconds. They're going to pump this one away. Ness, watch how fast he gets rid of this ball. And I can tell you, Christian Hughes coach said, get it out. Johnny Ayers set to kick. And the Hokies have the return on. He just kind of pitches one down there. Royals just going to let it bounce. And boy, did he kick it. Oh, no. Oh. Well, Jamie Silva, that's about the only thing he's done wrong today. He had one pass interference, and he'd like to have another take on that punt. Well, instead of getting between the goal line and the ball, he kind of got on the side of it and was expecting to be able to play it from there. Tell you what, 44's around the ball a lot, isn't he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's a good player. All ACC performer. Yep. Jamie is senior out of East Providence, Rhode Island. We were kidding around with him on the phone the other day. I said, I, I don't imagine Rhode Island is a hotbed for high school football like Florida and Texas and Ohio and Pennsylvania. And the Boston College is where he wanted to play the whole time, and he has had a whale of a career there. And with a touchback, it's Virginia Tech at its own 20-yard line. Glennon. Throws it complete in the first down. Justin Harper run out of bounds, but not before he got 13 yards and another first down. And uh, since 93, over 70 million bucks goes direct to the research and hopefully someday to find a cure. It's a great foundation. Sure is. At the 33-yard line, first down. Lennon sets up and fires. Tough catch and made. Wow. And up in the air, Josh Morgan, who has the touchdown grab today, and he got sandwiched between Gauze and Dunbar, and he held onto it. The bone crusher trying to put a bone crusher on it. Virginia Tech has not had the ball very much, only about seven or eight minutes compared with 20 minutes for Boston College. We're under two minutes. Virginia Tech has all its time out remaining. <laughs> the scrum. You know, they never got it down. That's the reason I'm laughing. I'm sitting right on, on the 45-yard line, exactly where, where uh, Glennon gets the ball, and he thought, well, I'll just lean in, and, you know, it'll be nice and easy for me to just pick up the first down. Well, he leaned in, and they were expected to get hit, and somebody from the, from the second down, he just thrilled it. He got the first, though, at the 44-yard line. Virginia Tech might want to pick up the pace a little bit here, though. Glennon in the shotgun. Throws on the run, and incomplete. Intended for Justin Harper. That'll stop the clock. A minute 25 remaining in the quarter. Silver again got a hand on that football. So he's been involved in a lot of plays out there, special teams, defensively. We mentioned that the Boston College good against the run. They're second in the nation against the run. But they're 106th against the pass. So they're, they're more like a... They play deep zones, bend, don't break type of stuff. We're going to give you some stuff, but we're going to come up and make the tackle. Here's a drop play to Brandon Orr. That's Orr's best run of the day. Close to a first down, and I think they're going to get a good spot, and it might be a first down. In fact, they're going to stop the clock here, and now they do say first down. With 1.16 remaining here in the half. Virginia Tech still on the short end here, though. 16 to 9, but driving late in the second quarter. They've got two timeouts remaining. 116 remains till halftime. Sean Glennon and Tyrod Taylor have both played quarterback, but right now it's Glennon. He's running the show. Sean back to throw off play action. The deep out and a nice cross to Eddie Royal. And it's another first down. Good throw by Glennon. Good throw. He's a smart kid. He's a big kid. Got a strong arm. And now that you're seeing the best of Sean Glennon right here with 
with the reading the coverage, throwing the makes the throw to the deep outside. Not many quarterbacks can make this throw. 15 to 18 yards, right on the money. But what they're doing is the Boston Colleges are giving them a lot of depth. They got three guys deep and they're gonna let them complete the short stuff. Got it down to the 27 yard line. That's Lennon out of the gun, throws the other side to Royal. And again, knocked out of bounds, but down Lennon near the 16 yard line, 11 more yards. So if they throw it to the left corner of the end zone, they got a good shot at hitting you. And that'd be funny. Move the penalty marker down. Wouldn't be that funny. Well, Virginia Tech, eighth play of the drive coming up, but a penalty marker before the snap. They have a dead ball foul, ball start, 76 to the offense. That's a five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Wayne Brown, the big left tackle. Here's one, did you know? Virginia Tech. It's been over 100 years since they played the same team twice in a season. 1906, William and Mary, and they played them three days apart. Wow. Barely had time to get rid of the bruises. <laughs> they played them again. They won both of them, too. We got a timeout. 105 remaining in the half. Virginia Tech driving. You see the team that took that one, 105 left. Virginia Tech with that penalty is back itself outside the 20-yard line again. But they've got an opportunity here draw even before halftime. First down at 15 at the Boston College 21-yard line. And the Hokies of Virginia Tech. Red zone defense for Boston College this season. Play action for Glennon. John's got all kinds of green in front of him. Waits and finally runs out of bounds. He got it down for about five yards near the 15-yard line. Well, Brad, this first half has been dominated by Boston College. Their offense has been on the field most of the time. And if uh, Virginia Tech can come out of here with a touchdown or get closer, this would be a huge boost to the Hokies. That's what Bob's talking about, look at the time of possession. 2015 to 848, and the total yardage doubled. in the shotgun, looking left, throws it out in the flat to Brandon Orr. Orr, oh, but he get planted at about the 13-yard line. Dawes made the stop. And another timeout taken with 47 seconds remaining. Frank Beamer will talk to his quarterback and try to figure it out. I thought about doing that today. I thought better of it. I thought it was last night around 11 o'clock. <laughs> you could have put ABC, ESPN, and all the other stations on your head. Hey, wait a minute now. Let's be nice. Play fair, guys. Yeah. 49 seconds left. We could talk about McGuire, couldn't we? Yeah, we could. Third down and seven. Big play here for Sean Glennon. Glennon flushed out of the pocket. Now he throws on the run. Got a man. Touchdown. Josh Hyman for the touchdown. It's a huge play. Oh, Bob, what a heads-up play. What a heads-up play because he was right at the marker where he had been over the line of scrimmage. He knew exactly where he was and then found the wide-open receiver. This is just huge. He just had to snap that throw off, too, because there was a defender, defender right in his path. And Josh Hyman now, Glenn. Glennon's thrown two touchdown passes, and the extra point could tie it here. Dunleavy, tie game in the ACC championship in Jacksonville. How about that? The defense says, we got this guy covered. We got this thing. We're going to get out here with a field goal. And then Glennon makes a move, buy some time, touchdown against you. We were just talking during the break a little bit, Bob and I and Paul and Bonnie. It's going to be a weird feeling, I would think, in the Boston College locker room at halftime. Yeah, well, you know, they've, they've, they've dominated the first half, but yet they're going to go in and say, it's tied. I mean, we should be way ahead. We feel good about ourselves. The defense is playing good. Offense is dominating. You know, our, uh, our Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback is playing well. 
scored a touchdown, we tied. Well, that just goes to show you that, you know, when you talk about the time of possession, I mean, it really doesn't mean anything. It's what you do with that time that you have. And, and the X factor. The X factor is the special teams. Two block kicks today, an extra point and a field goal. And, of course, the defensive touchdown to Boston College gave them one of their scores. Oh, boy, some indecision, and this could cost BC big time. Kevin Aiken swarmed under at about the five-yard line. They didn't decide quick enough whether they were going to take a knee or who was going to have it. And it's one of those, I got it, you take it. And now they're putting them forward progress, I guess, out to about the eight-yard line. It's a linebacker returning a kickoff. Kevin Aikens. Of course, he shouldn't have been, <laughs> he should have been blocking. That's right. <laughs> They're talking about it on the sideline right now. Yeah, he should have been the blocking bags. And, hey, don't take that. You're back there. He kind of lost his head there for a moment, picked the ball up, and took off. So we could have stayed in the end zone. Matt Ryan's going to take a knee and say, let's go to the locker room no and harm, talk about the tie. No harm, no foul. That's right. So we had a good game, but a lot of strange plays, a lot of big plays. Two touchdown passes from the guy that's not the Heisman Trophy candidate, but a touchdown run by the guy that is the Heisman Trophy candidate. We've had some wacky plays on special teams, a fumble return for a touchdown, and 16-16 with 20 seconds remaining. And apparently we got a timeout taken. I think it's Virginia Tech has taken the timeout with 20 seconds left. Beamer's been pacing that sideline in Blacksburg for 21 years. 166 wins. And Coach Jags on the other side in his first year as a head coach for BC. They'll take another knee here. And I don't think there'll be another timeout called. No, there's none left. There's none left. Okay, they don't have any yellow things up there anymore, do we? <laughs> Tied at halftime. ACC championship. We got two quarters to go. Who's going to go to the Orange Bowl? Who's going to be the ACC champ? Let's go down the bottom. Dr. Pepper ACC Championship in Jacksonville. Just about set to start the third quarter, and as you saw there, a lot of different things happened in that first half. 16-16, two quarters remain in regulation to decide who goes to the Orange Bowl. And two quarters left to see if Virginia Tech can make good on a loss in the regular season to Boston College, 14-10. <laughs> Navajus is going to tee it up, and Virginia Tech will have the football first to start the third quarter. Eddie Royal and Josh Morgan wait on the other end. And again, Eddie Royal has been one of the top return guys in the country. He's taken a couple of kicks for touchdowns this year. First team, all ACC is a return man. They're trying to keep it away from him or make him have to field it on the bounce, which they do right there at the five-yard line. And Royal, they do a good job on him. To get Emily to the, about the 24-yard uh, line, and that's where Virginia Tech will go back to work. Welcome back, everybody. Brad good stuff going. Good stuff. Matt Ryan's thrown for almost 200 yards and 31 attempts already to eight different receivers in the first half. Tyrod Taylor now on the handoff. And pick up with about two for Brandon Orr as we check in with Paul down on the cart cam. Oh, man, this is, I'll tell you, this is neat. The guys are taking care of me. Cart boy, I've got, uh, right, I've got a little man. cappuccino, like cookies. <laughs> I'm dying. This is one of the best jobs I've ever had. These guys are taking a little cappuccino. It's so nice. I mean, just so nice. It's now. the holiday season. You got the nice little cup yeah, there. The There's this machine. machine yeah. we're, we're all set. You guys go ahead. Continue on. Love to hear you. Love to hear what you're doing. It's really nice. Just eat your cookie. We'll get back to you later. Back on. Second down and eights. Glennon looks one way, comes back the other, and completes it. Josh Morgan trying to get to the first down sticks and won't get there. Let's check in with Bonnie. I got no food, no cappuccino. I did talk to Frank Beamer, though, and I said, with the time of possession swinging so heavily for BC, how are you still in? And he said, special teams have single-handedly kept us in the, key, in the game. I asked him about stopping those long drives from Matt Ryan. He said, we're going to have to live with the dump-off stuff. We need our defense to keep the big plays in front of them to try to prevent those big chunks of yards, Brad. Yeah, you know, Boston College offense, they drove into Virginia Tech territory on the first five possessions of the ballgame, but they only 
had one offensive touchdown. Yep. And now here's Virginia Tech opening up the third quarter with a third down and three. Glennon, the short throw across the middle. Now the forward progress of Josh Morgan is going to be the key right here. And it looks like he might have the first down. This might be close enough to take a look at. And while we await the chain gang coming out to take a look, we'll take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And a dominant first half as far as time of possession. Look at the difference there, 20-58. Yeah, we mentioned that. But there's what Bonnie was talking about and Coach Beamer was talking about, the two block kicks. Two blocks at the bottom down here, and then also the two turnovers. Virginia Tech had two turnovers, but they also blocked two kicks. So that kind of got them back in the ball game, and even at halftime. Yeah, even the playing field, even though the time of possession is nowhere near being even. First down, Virginia Tech by just a little. <laughs> Frank had to get out of the way of the chain gang there. Almost took one in the head. He's been at uh, one school longer than everybody except two other guys that we see yep. frequently. Yes. Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno. Yes. Nice play fake by Glennon. Down the middle, wide open man is Brandon Orr. And Orr gave some ground. He might have lost the first down when he backpedaled. I think he did. I'm impressed with the, uh, the, uh, the patience and the... Uh, Sean Glennon just taking things as they happen, uh, drop back, look at it. He's not predetermined where he's going to throw the ball. And if it's not there, he just takes off running at times. You know, Grace, on that last play, he sent three guys deep and just waited for Orr to come up underneath, and there was nobody on Orr. Look deep and then drop it off short. Well, Sean is 9 out of 10 throwing the ball since he threw that interception. So he's running the show pretty darn well for Virginia Tech today. He'll give it off. Brandon Orr. And Orr just doesn't look like himself to me, Bob, like yeah. we've seen him in past years. Their, their run game is not what it's been in the past, is for sure. One, one more note on the uh, the quarterbacks that Beamer was talking to me about. As far as this rotation, they were looking to get Tyrod Taylor a few more reps, um, but again, this is not something that is determined by who's got the hot hand. It's all situational. Good little nugget for you, Brad. Since the BC loss, Tech has outscored its opponents 33 to nothing in the fourth quarter, so it'll be interesting to see if that holds true again here today. Just when you were talking about the quarterback changes, they put in Tyrod Taylor in a direct Run for him on third and one, and he's got the first down. And injured Elion Gauze, the freshman cornerback, coming out. And uh, they're going to get pretty thin over there at that position. And Tyrone Pruitt is down as well. Two Eagles landed yeah, on that was, defense on one play. Not good. There's Sean Glennon's numbers, two touchdowns in the first half. Brandon Orr just hasn't been able to get anything going on the ground. And Josh Morgan caught one of those touchdown passes. We got a timeout with the injury. We'll be right back. And at the 45-yard line, Tyrod Taylor off play action. Back to throw and incomplete. Diving attempt made by Eddie Royal. Couldn't quite get to it. So back in the secondary, Roderick Rollins covering him on that play. And he's the guy that came in when... Elion Gauze was injured on the previous play before we had the timeouts. And that's also Tyrone Pruitt who's limping around. So two Eagles went down on the same play. Paul, you were right on top of uh, what they were working on with Gauze. Yeah, Gauze uh, is a hamstring, and his right hamstring, and he's just uh, he's trying to get himself loose. He's right here in front of, the, in front of the bench. He's running a little bit, but you can tell that hurts. And it's not good when you're a corner. you got to chase these people. That's right. Second down at 10. Taylor, quarterback draw, just pump fake one way, and I ran up the middle, and he got across midfield and down to the 49-yard line. The ACC championship on the line. If you're just joining us, we've got 11-15 remaining in the third quarter. Tie game, Sean Glennon of Virginia Tech thrown two touchdown passes. Matt Ryan of Boston College has run for a touchdown in the first half. We had a defensive touchdown. We had two block kicks. We had a two-point conversion return on a blocked extra point for who else? Virginia Tech and Frank Beamer and Beamer ball. We had a little bit of everything if you haven't been along with well, us. I wonder when the last time, though, Frank had one of those, a blocked extra point for a two-point the other way. It's probably been a while. It probably has been. They worked on everything yesterday, Bob. Yeah, they did. Virginia Tech, six out of eight on their third down conversions. Glennon's back in there at quarterback now. He's flushed out of the pocket, trying to run for it, and trying to tightrope the sideline, but he ran out of real estate, and he's out of bounds. And it's fourth down. Hey. 
Navy a winner today over Army, we understand, and uh, eight to three was the final. We understand in that matchup. Fourth down, Bowden to punt. Oh, man, the punting and kicking game of both teams has been, well, nice roll, but it's gonna go all the way to the end zone anyway. So he gets a 50-yard punt out of the deal. And Boston College will be taken over at their own 20-yard line, and that means a guy that's already thrown 31 passes is waiting to throw another one, Matt Ryan, when we come back. Something Paul's not part of. <laughs> First down, Matt Ryan trying to open things up with a draw to Andre Callender, and he only got about two. Chris Ellis made the stop. Boston College, as you might guess, their leaders led by their leader, Matt Ryan. 21 of 31, 197, and a rushing touchdown. Mm -hmm. And Andre Callender's been all over the map as both a rusher and a receiver. He's caught eight passes in the first half. That's not unusual because he was the leading receiver coming in as a running back for the Eagles. And the fourth leading receiver in the whole conference. Conference crown on the line right here. In these next two quarters, second down and eight, Ryan. Throws on the run and threw that one in the dirt. Chris Ellis was putting the heat on him. Chris Ellis was a guy that Boston College had a hard time handling the first time these two teams got together, but then he's a load for a lot of people. He is, and uh, nine sacks uh, on the year, 22 in his career. He had a sack, knocked down a couple of passes, four quarterback hurries the first time these two teams got together. Chris, a first team all ACC player, senior out of Hampton, Virginia. He's a big play guy, too. He's had two interceptions in his career and ran them both back for touchdowns. And Steve Logan said, you know, everybody was there screaming, why don't you, you know, chip him? He says, with what? I'm going to chip him with Calendar and take my best receiver out of the ball game? Right. He said, I don't think so. Third down and eight. eight. Virginia Tech may have jumped offside. Ryan's got a free play. Throws incomplete, and it's going to be lucky maybe if he has a free play. And I think it was Chris Ellis that got the early jump. Should bring up third down and three. Guys, one of the reasons why Ellis was being able to tee off on the last game is. Oh, I beg your pardon. It's on uh, offense. Sorry, Bonnie. Had the penalty wrong. Well, the guy he was facing was a freshman right tackle, Anthony Costanzo, and that's somebody the coaches, Eagles coaches, cannot talk enough about this guy. He was a tight end, a D end in high school, never even thought about playing offensive line. Comes in here, puts a good 30 pounds on, but just the natural skill level they think he has as an offensive lineman as he gets bigger, they see him being a true force for the Eagles line. There he is on the right side of that line, not even in a three-point stance, and back and trying to give Ryan some room, but incomplete intended for Megwa. And that just wasn't a good-looking offensive series at all no, for the that Eagles. Was, that was bad right from the first play. Yep. Um, and that's not what you want to come out when you the coach fires you up at halftime, goes over all the adjustments, and you come back out, and that's not what he wants to see. But Foster's liking it, defensive coordinator on the other side, because that's the first three and out forced today by Virginia Tech. And they came in on the season having forced 63 and outs over the course of the season. That's a lot of them when you really think about it. And they block a lot of punts. Uh -huh. Keep that in mind. Johnny Ayers inside his own five to try to kick this one out of there. And a short kick high. Up in the sun, watching it come down. Victor Harris. And Virginia Tech's in Boston College territory. Not a bad place for them to start offensively when we come back. You're watching the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship here in Jacksonville. Tie game, 16-16. Virginia Tech takes over in Boston College territory. And when they get it on their opponent's side of the field, they know what to do with it they on do, a short field. They do pretty good, don't they? They sure do. And Gaz is not in the game, guys. John Glennon, two touchdown passes today. They're trying to establish a ground game. Brandon Moore has really had to dig for any kind of yardage he's picked up. He got about four there as we pick up Matt Weiner, New York. Matt, here's 16-16 to find out who's going to the Orange Bowl. And that pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Scaife and Giles were both there. There's the guy Paul was talking about. Julian Gauze, the freshman, out apparently with a hamstring. Third down, Glennon flushed out of the pocket, trying to get away, and a great shoestring sack by Kevin Akins, the linebacker. 
Just a great play. Glennon trying to get outside, and Aikens subbing in there for Pruitt, who is on the sideline with an ankle injury. Just trips him up and saves the play. Another punting situation coming up. They squandered that excellent field position they, they that we sure were dragging did. out of Didn't the they? bat. Yep. And now penalty markers down as Brent Bowden was in punt formation. Did they take too much time? Prior to the snap, false start. And a false 16 start. 16 of the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still fourth down. So now they go deeper into their own territory. Still trying to get Aiken shoulder pad back in there after the sack. And the force punts. Now it's Bowden. Jamie Silva is back deep for Boston College. He might have a chance at this one. Jamie will take it at about the 16. Silva all the way out to the 30-yard line. Nice return. 43-yard kick and a 14-yard return by number 44. He has been around the football a lot tonight. Yeah. No, next week. <laughs> I don't have any comment for you, McGuire. There's a quick slam and a good throw. Robinson all the way to the 40-yard line. We're talking to the to the uh, coach Jagosinski, and he says we never get any yards after the catch. Well, this time he hits it on a slam, and he gets a lot of yardage after the catch on that one. Robinson just runs a slant. They're in a zone coverage. Nobody has him man to man. And before they can bring him down, he picks up oh, 25, 30 yards. 31. Longest play from scrimmage today. And Matt Ryan keeps He's adding up. numbers to his passing statistic. Back to throw again. And he zips one in there, completes. Kevin Challenger that time. Second down at four. Ryan from the gun under pressure. Ellis trying to put some heat on him, and he throws, completes. But short of the first down, got it down near the 30-yard line to Calendar again. You got a guy like Ellis that puts the heat on him, and I, I guarantee you that Matt Ryan knows where he is, and he's watching him. He gets such a great jump on the outside. I'm talking about Ellis. He's just, he's already by Costanzo before Costanzo can see him. Uh, we, we were talking to a couple of NFL scouts that were on the field before the ball game, and who are you here to watch? And they said, well, oh, number 12 over there for yeah, the Eagles. He's pretty good. And they all said, you know, he, 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 he scrambles, he moves around. Not alone does he throw the ball well, but he gets away from some sacks. He moves around, buys some time, and he's really good at not taking sacks and throwing it away. And I kiddingly said to Matt at the luncheon yesterday, as we have an official review going on, I said, uh, you know, I've lived in Atlanta. Falcons could use a quarterback. <laughs> He's a lot of guys could use him, I think, next year. And he also said thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> well, well I'm not sure. He caught the ball. The necessity of review. He's got both feet down. Yeah. And uh, at any rate, that's what they're taking a look at. It looks like he held on to the ball, yeah. He had the ball all the way to the bench. Yeah. So that one we assume is going to be upheld as called on the field and could have bring up a third down and a long one. You know what, Grace? I'm just down here close to these guys and looking at these receivers, uh, Challenger and Robinson and Gunnell and, and uh, Callender. These guys all have great hands. I mean, obviously they've got a, a lot of catches and things, but they have tremendous hands. The call on the field has been confirmed. It is a catch, out of bounds, third down. There we go. It also helps to have uh, a quarterback that can put the ball right on your hands, too. That's exactly right. Was that a coach's challenge? Did the coach challenge it? No. I didn't think so. They're down in the yard. Three tight ends in there for Boston College. Calendar, a championship game record here in the ACC with nine catches already. On the ground, not no. so easy. Absolutely not. Xavier Adibi was there. And he didn't get the first down. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't gain anything. He might have lost a little bit. Just watch the white shirts get off the line of scrimmage. When you see, when you see this kind of penetration, look, they're in the backfield. They're turning the, the red shirts around. 
and then it just allows people to get up in and make the play at the line of scrimmage. That's just really good defense. Well, every play is important when you're in a tie game, but this is the biggest one of the day so far for both the Boston College offense and the Virginia Tech defense. Minutes. You got to play action fake. Yeah, hey, uh, it's too bad. Because if you got to play action on fourth and one in this area, boy, this is where you want to play it. Six oh six remaining in the third quarter. Virginia Tech sixteen, Boston College sixteen. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Paul Ryan, Bonnie Bernstein. The ACC championship in Jacksonville. The winner goes to the Orange Bowl. And a lot of speculation about where the loser would end up, but we won't get into that right now. Here's fourth down. There's the play action Bob was talking about. The throw is incomplete. The Hokies take over. Yeah, see, I would have liked that play a lot more had the timeout not come exactly. into play. I mean, uh, gave the defense time to, to reconnoiter and say, watch for this and watch for that. Play action to his left, fakes it to Callender. Fullback is not open. The tight end is really not open downfield. He got to throw it over and under and all this. Good coverage by Virginia Tech. One other, one other thing, Bob, can I just ask you this? It, it, being the right-handed quarterback, wouldn't it be better, I'm just asking now, wouldn't it be better to roll up to your right-hand side where you feel a little bit more comfortable? Because when first, first of all, when the fullback wasn't open, he had to turn his body now to try to get the ball to the tight end. Probably didn't That's want a hard roll. throw. Probably didn't want to roll into Chris Ellis. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's probably right. Well, and they run to the left a lot more, too, because their big guy, Sherless, is on the left side, and Costanzo, the freshman, is on the right. Cam Martin has been injured a couple of different plays already in this game, and they're going to take him off this time. 15 straight bowl appearances for the Hokies under Coach Beaver. And, of course, they'll have another one uh, in their future, regardless of the outcome of this game. Well, I just had Orr go off. He thought he, he could get a couple five steps ahead of everybody. <laughs> 70 of the offense. That's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. I'm going to call it on Sergio Render, but uh, everybody kind of moving ahead of time. Oh, if I'm a back and I'm standing behind a guy like Render who weighs 310 pounds and he places and moves, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going, go where you're going, pal. That's right. First and 15 now, back just outside the 25-yard line. Tyrod Taylor. Is in at quarterback again. Play fake and the throw out to Eddie Royal. Royal, nice move to the outside. And he left somebody holding nothing but uh, some green grass out there. Pick up of about 11. He's got a lot of talent, that, uh, that Royal. He's going to be playing somewhere next year. Small kid, good on returns, good receiver. Came into the came into the uh, ball game today with 114 career receptions. Watch this move right here. Whoop. There it goes. Oh, that was Rollins that nearly got a hand on him. Has three punt returns for touchdowns in his career also. Lennon now back in at quarterback. Second down, run by Orr, nowhere. A loss of a yard. Jolan Dunbar, the little linebacker, made the stop. Another big game following us. And that's going to be out west. UCLA and USC getting together. Uh -huh. We had a chance. I, you know, I was listening to, to Mr. Gracie talking the other day. And you, you kind of think that USC is probably right now the best team in the nation. Well, I think they are. I think they've gotten everybody back and healthy. The quarterback, John Booty, John David Booty, and who's playing this game today to get into the Rose Bowl, and they could have done a lot better. What a catch that was on a crossing pattern by Justin Harper. Harper just reached out and snatched that thing to pick up a nine at the first down. Virginia Tech has four wide receivers that are very good, and they're all seniors. Morgan and Harper, Royal and Hyman. All four of these guys are seniors graduating. The strength of that offense. And all four of them are sub 4-4-40 four, four, guys, yeah. according to their statistics anyway. Eddie Royal moving up the list. There you go. Antonio Freeman, one of the legends honored at the luncheon yesterday, and he still looks like he could put a helmet on and go out and play for these guys. 
You know, I think a lot of people at this point know that uh, Glennon and Royal went to high school together, but there's something you might not know. Glennon was telling us the other day that the relationship initially in high school was a bit contentious because when Eddie transferred to Westfield High as a sophomore, he was a quarterback and he thought he was going to take Glennon's job. Now, this is where the story sort of changes. Glennon says that the coach said, no, Royal, you're going to play receiver. Royal said, well, I knew I was only 5'10 and I'd probably have a better shot at the NFL if I switched to receiver. Either way, they're really good friends. Now and the relationships worked out well. And Taylor's back in there now. Glennon goes out and Taylor with flags down is going to go down. He's sacked and there's probably a holding call on top of this. Yeah, on number 70, there's a holding call on Render. Uh, he had to just grab. He's trying to save his quarterback. And also Taylor is slow getting up. Holding 77 of the offense. That penalty is refused. Third down. Oops, excuse me. It's Wang. It's the guy next, next to him. You know, when you're talking about these receivers in, in, uh, on this field today, there are eight receivers from Boston College. They average over 10 yards a catch. There are six receivers at Virginia Tech on this field today that average over 10 yards a catch. Now, when was the last time you saw 14 guys <laughs> that average over 10 yards a catch? That's amazing. I don't know if Sean Glennon's back in because they want him in there on third and 19 or because Taylor limped off. For whatever reason, it's number seven back in there. And back to throw. Pressure coming. Going deep down the left sideline and incomplete. Nice job by Roderick Rollins. Staying with Eddie Royal. A reminder, you can help decide the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. You can go to ESPN.com and search Pontiac to vote throughout the bowl season and help determine which school will win $100,000. And a lot of great moments this year in a crazy college football season that's seen upsets virtually every weekend. Biden's punt. Silva's going to have a chance from the 15. Jamie Silva sidesteps the first wave and then gets buried by all the white shirted Hokies. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Thank you, Brad. This Sports Center Minute is powered by Vizio. The nation's leading rusher, Kevin Smith, rolled up 284 yards and four touchdowns on the ground. In Central Florida beat Tulsa in the Bright House Network's Conference USA Championship. His seventh straight win earns them a spot in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. And LSU Athletic Director Skip Burfman says the school has worked out a contract extension with coach Les Miles. He's denying rumors that he's headed to Michigan. Miles Miles wearing that purple tie at that news conference before the SEC championship. We have a dead ball foul. They had 12 men in the yeah. infraction by the offense. Yeah. There's 12 players in formation for three seconds at the five yard penalty, and it's still first down. But the problem was there, Boston College and uh, Coach Jay, <laughs> the frustration of 12 guys were in the huddle. It's just a matter of which. Which, which set of receivers, which set of backs, how do we, what formation do we want in the ball game? And there were 12 guys instead of 11, and you can't break the huddle with 12 guys in the huddle. And Matt Ryan back battles into the shotgun on first down at 15. Virginia Tech backs away from the blitz. Ryan throws over the middle. Oh, what a hit. By Cam Chancellor. He's had a couple of those today, hasn't he? Callender's going to feel that one tomorrow. That's the 10th catch for Andre, a continuing ACC championship game record, but he paid the price for that one. I'll tell you another thing, that they're holding Ellis on almost every play. I mean, he's getting he's getting back to the quarterback at, and also being held on the way back there. It's amazing. Don't say that so loud. We don't want the officials to hear it. We've had enough flags, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. They're holding Ellis. <laughs> Second down and 10. Ryan, a quick throw. Got it to his tight end, Purvis. He's been kind of quiet for the tight end today. Only the second catch he's had, and he came in with 50. And that is number two in single season ACC uh, history now as far as catches by a tight end in a single season. So he's matched that mark with two catches here today. Ryan is an all-ACC first-team tight end. He goes out split to the top of your screen. Third down and five. This time the heat is coming. Ryan's in trouble, and down he goes. Barry Booker and Chris Ellis. 
Well, you know, when these guys decide that they're going to blitz and they're going to come, I mean, they really do come. They bring it all, and, and they, there's no way to slow them down. When these tackles and guards just get a chance to set up, as soon as they set up, these guys are already by. Take a look at it. You're going to look at number 49 and number 59 on this blitz, and these guys are in the quarterback space. There's just no place for Ryan to go. What you saw there is, is all the receivers were released. There was five offensive linemen trying to block five defensive guys. One of the middle linebackers came. DC has changed up its front on the punting situation. Try to prevent any more block kicks. End over end job. It's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 46, 44 yard line, somewhere in that vicinity. So, Virginia Tech's going to take over. Sean Glennon will be the man at the controls. You, you're superstitious at all, Sean. <laughs> you try to eat the same thing, uh, listen to the same songs. Uh, I always wake up with a seven at, at the end of my alarm clock. And I'm weird. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, number seven. You're not as weird as you think, That's Sean. That's right. And here he is on play action. Still waiting. Now he's going to tuck it and run and got near the 50 yard line. There's a lot of guys that are superstitious. Uh, it's, uh, you know, coaches, uh, trainers, uh, <laughs> the best of the players, the lowest of the players, you know, everywhere from wearing the same socks or doing the same routine each each morning when you wake up the day of a game. Uh, Frank Beaver's got to wear the same suit every game, before every game. The same suit. He said, uh, Sean was telling us how. It was, the suit was at the cleaners, and uh, his wife had to make a special <laughs> trip to pick up the suit. And get it to the bus and get it to the plane and get it to the game. There's a good run by Lewis. Brandon Orr has been struggling, and Kenny Lewis, the sophomore, comes in and gets a first down. 16-16, final 30 seconds of the third quarter. Reminder, join ESPN of the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. It's Jimmy V week. Call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V or log on to www.jimmyv.org and make a donation. Yes, I wake up every day hoping there's an Elka-Seltzer nearby. <laughs> Would you say you woke up or you came to? I woke up. <laughs> First down inside the 43. Glennon, play action. Now he's going to run again. Couldn't find a receiver, second time that's happened on this drive, but he gets what he can. He got about three yards before Austin Giles brought him down. And that's gonna do it for the third quarter. ACC football championship and a trip to the Orange Bowl is on the line. And we got 15 minutes to figure out who's gonna get there. Stick around. Mascots can't talk, so that's why we had to welcome you back to Jacksonville and the ACC championship that way. 16-16 as we start the fourth quarter. 15 minutes to determine who will go to the Orange Bowl. Sean Glennon, quick throw out. Josh Morgan, Morgan trying to give ground. Gives too much before he comes forward, and Gauze comes in to make the stop. And Gauze has been in and out of the lineup on that corner position. And they've been banged up back there in the secondary. And uh, they got some big third down here, third and seven for the Hokies. Glennon. The quick throw complete, and looks like a first down. Rolling to the 32-yard line is Josh Hyman, and that'll move the sticks. You take a look at Jacksonville Municipal Stadium, and you can see that it is not full, and the crowd has been a disappointment. Uh, there's the final year of the contract at the ACC Championship to be held here, and there's speculation as to whether or not it will return here. It will go on a rotating basis. Charlotte's been mentioned. Tampa's been mentioned. Coming here on a rotating basis has been mentioned. So that hasn't been determined yet, but it is a disappointing crowd. It's a it's a long ways from uh, Boston College campus, obviously. It was, yeah, it's, it was sold out the first year of the contract two yep. years ago when, when Florida, Florida State, State was in it. When, and they came over, of course, short, yeah. short way to go. But... but uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be up for grabs uh, next year. Another lineman down. We have had some guys banged up today, it seems. That's Nick Marshman that's slow to get up. And 
He's on the way to the sideline. We're on our way to a quick break. We'll be right back. In the fourth quarter, 14-18 remaining. Second down, Tyrod Taylor's back in at quarterback for the Hokies. At the BC 30, and somebody flinched. I think it was Wayne Brown, the left tackle. And so it's going to make it second long. Snap. That was a false start. Number 76 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Dr. Pepper statistics through three quarters. Still the advantage, total yardage, big time for Boston College. But again, those turnovers in the first half yeah. and the points off. Was... Virginia Tech actually had the better of it in the third quarter. Right. They had better field position, had more plays, but just didn't get anything done. And they still can get it done at the 35 of BC. They can get their offense in gear. Taylor with a blitz. Runs the option on the left side and gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. And he got tattooed by Roderick Rollins. Came over to make the hit. Rollins has played a lot because of Goss being out of there. Really impressed with this Boston College defense. Defensive coordinator Frank Spaziani was one of the two holdovers. There's Frank. And he was uh, very instrumental in, in bridging the gap from Tom O'Brien to Jeff Jagosinski. And uh, a lot of the uh, credit has to go out to Frank for, uh, for holding this team together and doing a great job with the defense. Lennon back in at quarterback now. Third down and 13. John throws over the middle, and that was nowhere near Brandon Orr's hands. Well, he threw it because he was getting pressure, and Orr didn't turn around soon enough. Now what do we do, boys? Field position, you, if you're Frank Beamer and you've got good special teams, you play field position. It would be about a 52-yard field goal into the wind, so the punter is out there. Went Bowden again to kick. He's not one inside the 20 today. Jamie Silva stands waiting on the other end. Too much of it. And he tried to kick it as short as he could, and it got to the end zone anyway. So Matt Ryan at Boston College, they've got the next shot at it at the 20 when we return. Minutes of the fourth quarter. Who's going to win this thing? 16 apiece. Matt Ryan hands off the calendar. Calendar got a couple. Our Pacific Life game summary. Matt Ryan, 247 yards throwing, but a rushing touchdown earlier in the ball game. But the special teams for Boston College haven't been. They've had a field goal and an extra point blocked, and that one scooped up by Flowers and returned the length of the field for a two-point conversion. And 16-16, our score right now. BC this half, they've been three and out on two of their three drives. Trying to avoid that here. Ryan's got some room to work, and he's going to run it. And goes down at about the... 29-yard line, a little bit shy of the first down, I think. You look at Matt Ryan's uh, yardage there, what'd you say, 200, almost 250 yards. You would never know he would be capable of doing that with his receivers. If you listen to the way Logan Wisconsin described them, he said, we don't really have many explosive players. We've got to have the lowest yards after the catch numbers in the history of the league. And we have these 8 to 10 yard drives that are basically like watching paint drive. And it's just a testament, Brad, as to how you can work without a bunch of blue chippers. Well, their yards after catch today has been a lot more impressive than what Steve was talking about with us. He didn't get this either. I'll tell you what, you got to see that what this defensive line did to their offensive line. They actually stood him straight up in the air, and Ryan tried to lean, lean, and he couldn't lean anywhere. They've had it, it a was couple of, They've had a couple of third and ones today, and they haven't gotten either one of them. Oh, but, uh, and Ness, you ought to see this when they when they just they, they just take the whole offensive line and stuff them straight up in the air. Watch this. They, watch these guys go up in the air. Look at the line. They're up, standing up, and then Ryan's trying to make a move. He can't go anywhere. That's just great defense. It sure was. And it forces a punt again. There you see the first down story. Boston College really struggling this half, but Virginia Tech hasn't been able to take any advantage of that either. 
This time Ayers, if he gets one that Eddie Royal can run back without. And that's one that maybe Eddie wanted to, yeah, wanted to scoop up. He wanted it, but yep. he hit. <laughs> yeah, and I think they weren't kicking it away from him. They, they've read his press clippings. During the timeout, you can see the intensity. Uh, Gosner Sherlis, the left tackle, captain, second team All ACC performer, trying to fire up that Eagle offense. And they need to get it back first, see if their defense can get it back for them. Tyrod Taylor at quarterback off play action, rolls and throws way over everybody. The lead route by the wide receiver, and the receiver read it as stopping and running the out. And the freshman quarterback thought he would read it to keep going down the sideline. Again, Virginia Tech has rotated quarterbacks throughout the game. There's the numbers. Sean Glennon, two touchdowns on a 15 out of 24 day. Taylor, three out of six. And only five yards rushing as well. The defenses of both teams, as we talked about it, just tightened up in this half. And with 10.30 to go, somebody's got to make a play pretty soon, one way or the other. Taylor, quarterback draw. Leaving his way, and he's making a play across the 30. And all the way out to the 46-yard line. Just what I said, he wasn't yeah. running the ball that well either, 31 yards. And you got Alan Smith down here hurt on the 10-yard line, another Boston College player. This is a quarterback draw all the way. He pauses, he pauses, and then everybody's downfield blocking for him. And this is the thing that Taylor can do. He's got the ability to make long runs. Boston College has had so many people shaken up that it took them about a minute to get out to Allen Smith because they were working on other guys on the sideline. Some guy asked me if I could go out and get some tape. <laughs> They're running out of it, I think. 10-20 remaining in the ball game. Reminder, time permitting after the game. John, Craig, and Doug will be in New York, and they'll bring you the Dell postgame report with all the scores and highlights of the day. Brad, this defense for Boston College has been nicked up all year. The linebacker, Toll, remember him? Yep. He didn't even start the season. He's uh, out with a medical red shirt. Then they got uh, Regi. He was an academic uh, casualty. He's coming back next year. Albright, their leading sacker, uh, broke a forearm. Uh, a couple weeks ago, so he's out. And Tribble, one of their starting corners, is also out for this game. So lots of, lots of injuries. First down now is Sean Glennon's back in there. After Taylor got him 31 yards, Glennon will try to do it with his arm. And the out is complete. On his knees, Josh Morgan will stop it right there, but he did go to the ground to make the catch, and he got about nine. So Virginia Tech back in Boston College territory but can they do anything about it that's the question they just get into this territory and, and the whole thing just falls apart and but you've got to give credit to the yeah, defense yeah, yeah. both defenses uh, ever yeah, yeah, yeah. since that first quarter it's been a defensive football game yep John Glenn had to go and get out of the huddle look at the coaches on the sideline to get the play call back in and now they'll go on the ground and it's Brandon Orr and he got positive yardage down to the 40 Thank you for the 35-yard line. Well, you, you're talking about this offense. You know, this offense has been hot and cold all year, and and the whole summary of it is on the year they're like 97th in the nation in total offense. So they've sputtered all year. First of all, the offensive line wasn't playing well. They got them going. The receivers have been great all year. I mean, they've got a lot of talent and a lot of depth, but quarterback situation's been up and down. Here's a run on the inside. Brandon Orr, finally a couple big runs. 14 yards that time. You know, you'd think that they would be doing this for I mean, most of the game. Look up when you when you look at what they have in the front. They got Schumann, who's the center, is 314 pounds. Marshman is the left guard, 357. And Render, who's the right guard, at 310. And, you know, they have, and you just haven't been running up, you know, right at these guys, except now. But uh, again, you're wearing down that defensive line of Boston College. First down at the 21 of the Eagles. Eddie Royal in motion. They give it to Orr, fake the handoff to Royal, and Orr goes down at the line of scrimmage. Jolan Dunbar made the stop. 
Well, they set that play up. I wonder if they'll run it somewhere later. There's not a lot of later left. 8.40 remaining. Frank Beamer, 15 straight years, has taken the Hokies to bowl games. His senior group, the winningest in school history, 41 wins and 10 losses for the seniors that are out there playing for yep, They won a lot of games, more than any other senior group. Now Glennon. In the shotgun, the quick throw out in the flat to Brandon Orr. Orr trying to get to the corner. And he only got about two yards inside the 20. Roderick Rollins made the stop. And it's going to bring up a huge third down here. But Virginia Tech is in field goal range, you would assume, at least to try to change the scoreboard if they don't get the first down or the touchdown. You know, you just, you just wonder about the about the adjust, adjustments because when, that, when this game first started, Matt Ryan came out and just took this team right down the field. They did it a couple of times, and then they got stopped, and they really have not done a thing since then. They're about seven and a half minutes left when this snap comes, and whoops, it's going to stop at 7.35 because Ed Wong stepped out of his stance there a little bit early. Part of the snap, ball start number 77 of the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. And it's still third down. He's been injured this year, too, and they yes. just got him back. He's had an ankle. He's an ex-tight end. He's one of those guys that was a tight end that said, <laughs> Ed, we want to move you to tackle. Right. Why don't you go and gain about 40 no pounds? <laughs> yeah. uh, Bob, they said, Ed, we're going to move you to the dining room. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll let you know what you're going to play when you come out of there. We have training table six times a day. That was the fifth pre-snap penalty against Virginia Tech today. That'll drive you crazy. Four receivers for Glennon out, third down and 13. Pump fake, down the middle, touchdown! Eddie Royal! They did do something about it. Well, when you see this catch, Nash, you're going to just love it. It's all hands. And I mean, he waits to the last second. That ball is high, and he went up to get it. Eddie Royal is only 5'10". They're going to have a review of the catch. Sean Glenn and an excited quarterback on the sideline. And why not? Official review. All right, you just got to watch his hands. He's going to come to the, the right-hand side of the screen up. He catches the ball there. He comes down. Does he maintain possession of the ball? Absolutely. Couldn't see from All right. Going to get another angle here. There's the catch. He comes down. He's already crossed the line. He has his possession of the ball. It's the second review we've had today. I don't see the reason for either one of them, to be totally honest with you, but that's just me. And the worst part about it, the referee has to go all the way down no, the other end catch. of the official. That's a catch. Yeah, that's, it's a field. touchdown. It's Eddie Royals' fourth touchdown catch of the year. He said somewhere along the line, he's the big play playmaker, and he just made a big play there. Boy, did you watch his hands, though, guys? I mean, I mean it. They've already confirmed it's a touchdown. That's why you hear the applause from the Hokie fans in the background. So John, Judd uh, Dunleavy comes in now for the point after. The score finally changed after being tied at 16 at halftime. It took all the way to the 7-12 mark of the fourth quarter for Virginia Tech to take the lead. Now they try to tack on point number 23. And it's up and good. So the Hokies have got a lead by a touchdown, but you know who's waiting in the wings? Matt Ryan in Boston College. How about Sean Glennon? Comes in, he's been sharing time at quarterback. Yep. He was one of the more outspoken guys saying, wait a minute, I'm the starter, why are you playing the other guy in midseason? Then they got to the fact where one was hurt at one time, one at another time, now they're both healthy. And now he's happy with the quarterback situation. Yep. And he's thrown three touchdown passes against a guy that's a Heisman Trophy candidate. Exactly, he said, you know, he said, the only other guy's getting all the acclaim, what about me? He started the first two games, and after the LSU game, where he got beat very badly, he was benched for five games. Taylor started, and then Taylor got hurt. He got an opportunity to come back and has been playing really good football. Three touchdown passes in the ACC championship game. 
knuckle ball of a kick and a bounce. We've taken it about the six by Gunnell. And Gunnell got across the 25 out to the 28, maybe the 29 yard line. Take it back to that touchdown. Okay, this is, see the open field in the middle of the field? That's what, that's what the quarterback is seeing. The slot guy's gonna run a little, little post route. He's gonna go down, little, take a step to the outside, and then see all that room to the inside, the, the uh, middle of the end zone. And watch the move that he's gonna put here on Silva. Going to the corner, no, I'm coming back inside. And the pump fake by Glennon was perfect. Yeah. Now he can sit back and watch the Hokie defense play. They've got a touchdown lead, seven minutes and change remaining. Matt Ryan, quick throw to the outside, completes the calendar. He continues to add to a double-digit day now, just catching the football. Yeah, and Matt Ryan has been in this situation before to the Hokies. Yep. About a month, a little about a month and a half ago in the rain. How much time was left? There was 6.01 left the last Whoops. time the Hokies had the ball. This time there's 7.12, I think, when they took over. Yeah. yeah. So they got a whole extra minute to play with. Yes, sir. <laughs> Down to six and a half and ticking in the snap. Boy, the ground game has been tough for both teams. Andre Callender, I don't think he got it. Let's check in. He may or may not be done by then. Seven-point game here. Third down and one hasn't been good to Boston College today. They've got a third and one here. They're going to throw for it, and they've got it. Robinson with a catch and a nice gain after the catch out near midfield. Pick up of 11. Nobody's panicking for Boston College. They've been in these situations before, and especially Matt Ryan. He just... Says all we need to do is just get out and score a touchdown. We get plenty of time to do it, and we can do it. But just on their side of the midfield stripe right now. He did it at Clemson. He did it at Virginia Tech. He's trying to do it here in Jacksonville. Matt drops to throw over the middle, completes it to Whitworth. And the fullback gets down to the 45-yard line. Pick up the five, so it's a little bit here, a little bit there. And we're down to five minutes. He pats Chris Ellis on the backside. That's, that's good sportsmanship. Ellis came in and maybe maybe took him down a little bit late. Sherilis, the left tackle, was talking to um, Jack Chimbers, the uh, referee, about, hey, now wait a minute, you should, maybe you should have called that one there. No, nah, let me tell you, Grease, he was there so fast that, and, and, and Matt Ryan didn't throw the ball. He had him, and he he was in, in the air when he hit him. It was a good hit, really was. Ganell has been shut out this half, and he's been one of his favorite receivers this year. There's a throw out. Callender got popped by Harris. Pickup of only a yard. And now time winding down. Of course, time was winding down in Blacksburg on that Thursday night in the slop. And it was not a Victor Macho not a Harris. Good night at the last meeting, October 25th. Here was the first touchdown, and that was Gunnell in the corner of the end zone, and then scrambling to find time. 11 seconds to go, and Callender, touchdown, and Boston College pulled off the miracle comeback. And now they're trying to come back down a touchdown here under four minutes. Over the middle, complete, and it's a first down. One thing that Coach Jags knows as a first-year head coach at BC is what to do and who should have the football. Put the ball in the playmaker's hands. That's the biggest one. You know, those are the guys that are going to make the players for you at the end. That's why Ryan's always got in his hands at the end of the game. He's got it coming up on a first and ten with 3.35 remaining. Down a touchdown. Ryan, quick over the middle, great catch inside the 20, challenger. At the 19-yard line. And a score-saving tackle by Challenger. There was nobody else back there. And that's one of the things that Boston College does not have, a receiver that can, can break a tackle. Yards after catch. We've been talking it all the time. Catches the slant. Now he's one-on-one -on -one with the free safety, and they just don't have the ability to shake and bait. And Chancellor made that game-saving or touchdown-saving tackle, at least for the time being. 
at the 19. Ryan in trouble. And he throws it away and avoids the sack. It'll bring up second down. Well, Coach Jags talked about making a play, and Matt Ryan wants the ball in his hands. The only way Virginia Tech is going to get out of this is if one of their guys makes a play. Whether it's a sack and a fumble on the quarterback, whether it's an interception in the... Somebody defensively has got to make a play, or this game's going to be tied. Ryan had hit his last six passes before that one. And that's second down and ten. The Eagles at the Hokies' 19-yard line, trying to tie the game. Ryan waits, throws, complete down to the 13 to Calendar out of the backfield, his 12th catch of the day. And the clock winds under the three-minute The Eagles back one more time this season to keep him in the hunt for the Orange Bowl. Ryan to throw, and that time Calendar broke his pattern off. A DB was out there with him incomplete. You know, I'll tell you, when you just sit down here and this close to, to Ryan and you watch him work, I mean, he, he doesn't, at, at this point in time, he's not looking off Brees like he normally would in the middle of the field. He's basically going out to the side or to the man he wants to go to right now. And just, just because of the matchup, basically the matchup, he's going to throw it to that guy. Well, right now, They've got a fourth down that's too important not to talk about it. They take a timeout. Fourth down and four with 2.25 to play. And the game is in the balance right now. One play could be the difference between the Hokies surviving this game and being an ACC champion or Boston College maybe tying things up. Well, what do you call? you got fourth and four. You need to pick up four yards. You're going to throw it to your, your best receiver, which is Callender, out of the backfield on an option route, which is which is what he just threw the last two plays. Just remember, this kid can still run now. He's got he's got some pretty good feet, and if these guys turn and they start turning their backs to the, to, uh, to Matt Ryan, I, I assure you, they don't have that far to go. They got about not not by they have four yards to go is all they have. They got to get to the nine yard line, and you wonder. On the other side, Bud Foster's defense, how much pressure do they bring or do they bring it? He I just think that maybe I would the have ball a, game right here. I just think that I would have a guy to spy him. I really do, just to make sure. Fourth and four. This might be the ball game. Ryan in trouble. Buys himself some time. Throws, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Vince Hall. And what Bob said moments ago comes to pass. The only way they might be able to prevent this from being a tie is to make a play on defense, and they just did. Flag after the play was over, and it's against Boston College. Here's a call from Jack Childress. At the end of the down, we have 99 personal foul, BC. We have 65 personal foul on Tech. Those fouls offset. The down and distance is unaffected. First down. Two guys that have been playing against each other all day. Carlton Powell, the defensive tackle, and Matt Tennant, the center, haven't had it at the end of the play. Flashback to the first game. This is the way he scrambled. He scrambled to his left, and he threw back across, but he never saw the underneath guy. He never saw Vance Hall. And the interception may end, end the hopes for Boston College. And isn't it amazing that a guy that didn't play in the first game, Vince Hall, maybe just came up with the play of the game. Yep. He said they were a healthier team and a better team because of his return. And he just made the play of the day so far. Here's Orr. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. But again, the clock is a major factor. DC's only got one timeout remaining. Well, you know, before the game, I was talking to Frank Beamer, and he said that one of the guys that we are truly happy to have back is Vince Hall. He said, we didn't have him, as, as you, Bobby, you just said. He said, but this guy is a huge addition to our football team. He's healthy. We've got our team is about as healthy as it's ever going to get, and you, you see the results of what happens. That was a great call, Grease. Great call. BC has used its final timeout. So if Virginia Tech can find a way to get a first down, they're going to go back home ACC champions. 
BC three red zone possessions today. They got one touchdown. That was Matt Ryan's run. They missed a field goal that was blocked, and they just threw an interception. That's not what you want to do when yep. you get inside the 20. Yep. You know, you, you just have to give it to these guys, these defensive guys. I mean, all day long, both of these teams. These guys are worn out. They've not done a long time chasing people around. So now second down at 10. That's really not what's important right now. Tyrod Taylor has come in at quarterback. Now what you don't want to do is turn around and put it on the turf here and give it back to Boston College. And he's given one up today already. Yeah, ball security is paramount here. We don't want to take any chances. We're going to run a draw play. Out to about the 16-yard line. So a first down if they can get one, and it might be good enough. Let's check in with Matt at three. Matt Ryan looking on has thrown an interception that might be the determining factor of this whole ball game. And now after a timeout on one side, we've got a timeout on the other side. And then your tech takes one here. What Matt was trying to do is just keep it alive. Yeah. He didn't want to take a sack. It's fourth down. At least just throw the ball down there. Give somebody a chance, but as he was throwing the ball, he was, he was hit. But didn't go where he wanted it, but uh, trying to make a play, those things will happen. And, of course, as you said, rolled out, and it was an eerily similar play to the one that he threw for a touchdown in Blacksburg back in late October. Yep. And when he rolled out there on the replay, I didn't notice it at first. He looked to that corner of the end zone to see if there was somebody home over there, maybe named Callender. He wasn't there. Yep. And then he tried to throw across his body in the middle of the field and had it picked off. And now Sean Glennon apparently is going to come back into the Virginia Tech huddle. And the biggest difference on that play there, he, he was harassed by two Virginia Tech players, and he was going backwards and not forwards like he was on, on, on that game uh, up there. Right. Well, Sean Glennon has been the star of this show so far, and he's back out there right now, and if he gets a first down, Virginia Tech's Hokies are going to be the ACC champions. Eddie Royal in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Or didn't get it. Got about two. Mark Zerlin made the stop, and it is fourth down. Now the clock is going to wind under a minute. BC has no timeouts remaining. Virginia Tech by a touchdown. No timeouts, as you can see. It's Bob circled, and we just dropped down there, and the clock will wind down. They'll use all this play clock that they can. And they take a timeout. You don't take the penalty. Take wait one second, and, you, and the nice part about it is the coach on the sideline can call it. Yep, they should get it down to 40 or 41. And there's the whistle, and it's at 41. So 41 seconds, fourth down and two. And a guy that knows a little bit about special teams knows that when he sends that group out there, they can't afford to get anything blocked on his side of the football. And here comes the man of the hour right now. Brent Bowden, they'd like to get a nice kick, but just get any kind of kick out of there. Our Chevrolet players of the game today. I don't think there's any doubt on Virginia Tech side of things. Sean Glennon, three touchdown passes. Jamie Silva, a fumble return for a touchdown and an interception. In recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And Silva also will go back and be the return man of this punt. Matt Ryan looks up. He knows he's only got going to have about uh, 35 seconds and no timeouts to work with. Brent Bowden jobs to get the ball out of there, and he did. And he got the best kick he's had all day. Silva's got a call for a fair catch at the 35. Punning has not been a bright spot for number 97, but he just hit the one of his life right there. And now Matt Ryan show one more time, but no timeouts left. He's thrown 49. Number 50 is coming up here in just a minute. 34 seconds, no timeouts. If Matt Ryan had the receivers that Virginia Tech had, who had some, who had some, some, some speed and some giddy up and some shake and bake and some big play capabilities, he would be dynamic. But he doesn't have those guys. He's got good possession receivers. Ryan rolls to throw deep out and way out of bounds, incomplete. Megua was the guy that was the closest one to the football. So he's down to three more passes. 
or more, and only 28 seconds. You know, he was telling us the other day, you know, the two-minute drill is about getting it to midfield, and then you can take a crack at it. But they've got some, they've got some room to make up here from the 35-yard line. John Glennon staring into the sun. About the only sunny spot left on the field is where he's standing, and he'll have the sun shining on him back home if they win this game. Ryan throws off his back foot. His receiver turned around a little bit late. It's incomplete. Well, he had to throw the ball, and the receiver tried to hang it up there because he knew where Challenger was going to run it out, maybe 18, 20 yards down the field. And the timing just wasn't right. Well, and the other thing, too, is the defensive line, these guys are teeing up, knowing that all he's going to do is go back deep and throw the ball. And, and the receivers, you know, I know they're going to cut off a route, but you've got to cut it off just a little bit sooner because he's not going to have that much time to throw the ball. These, the four down defensive linemen, they are coming. And the bottom line, he can't throw a slam and expect a wide receiver to break a tackle for a big play. They're going to have to hustle to get this playoff, and they're out of timeouts. Takes a snap in the shotgun just in time. Ryan has it batted in the air, and it's intercepted. Flags are down. Virginia Tech, the DB's got it, and he's heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Isn't it amazing that with 11 seconds left in the rematch, the defense makes a play to win the game. 11 seconds remained in regulation when Matt Ryan made the play in Blacksburg. Well, now, hold on, boys. <laughs> Hold on a second. If it's a delay a game penalty, it's against. And BC's very happy about this. How, now, fitting, how fitting that a DB picks off the anymore. last one, a guy that has played well all day. A covered up man went downfield during the pass. That penalty is refused. There was a touchdown. After the touchdown, there was a dead ball, unsportsmanlike foul against the scoring team, number 11. That penalty will be administered on the succeeding kickoff. Touchdown. I don't think they care about that right now. Nah, doesn't matter. That's the fifth interception returned for a touchdown this year against Matt Ryan. Frank Beamer is going to the Orange Bowl and a few oranges are flown out of the stands over there where the Hokie fans are. All right, here we go. Think back to the first, I'm talking Virginia Tech now, the first BC game. If they hadn't have lost that game. They'd be in the national championship probably. They'd be. They're ranked sixth right now. Right. They probably would have been ranked two or three and in the national championship game. Just something else to ponder in a wacky college football season. Well, two years ago, they played Florida State, and they didn't win it. And now they're 11 seconds away, and they are going to win it. And another look. Ball was batted in the air by Barry Booker. There's a DB, number 11. Booker. Does a nice job. Booker knocks it up into the air. A DB's had a great game. Most of the time, he's been covering Calendar out of the backfield, stuffing the uh, run. Adibi, the linebacker, is going to be an outstanding. He's a fifth-year senior, playing, uh, playing his last regular season game. How about the two senior linebackers making interceptions late in the game yeah, to all. ice the win for the Virginia Tech? Yep. Well, the one thing you'd really like, too, with the defense, again, I mentioned the two couple of plays before, is you get the defensive line, and they, those guys never slow down. They know, they knew that, uh, uh, that the Brian was going to have to throw the football, but he's going to throw it, he's going to step back in there. So they didn't have to, there were no lanes, nothing to do to just go to the quarterback. They did that great job, and that really helps the secondary. Well, Tech, Virginia Tech is going to lose 12 seniors off of this team. The four wide receivers on offense and six defensive players, six fifth-year seniors, a lot of leadership, a lot of change next year for Frank Beamer. This has been a, been a year that we thought maybe we could get a little bit more out of, but I think the, the questionable quarterback play early in the year took that away. 
Tomorrow when you get up and check the morning paper, it might say something like that. Because they're going to get their payback. Everybody talked about it this week, and players usually say, well, you know, we can't worry about that. We have to worry about trying to win the title and go in the Orange Bowl. Everybody talked about it all week. So tough to beat a team twice. Now I think to the night's game, can, can Oklahoma beat Missouri twice in the same season? And a return out to about the 42-yard line. There's three seconds remaining. 30 to 16. And the Hokies are going to go to 11 and 2. We mentioned 10 or more wins, nine of the last 13 years. They're not just Coastal Division champions now, they're the ACC champions three seconds from now. And look at them jumping up and down on the sideline. They're having some fun. And you know, you can talk about all the seniors and all of that, that that guy will lose next year. Yep. He'll find a way to get it done again. He's that well, good a coach. He had a good recruiting class this year, and he only played two of those recruits, so he's redshirting the whole rest of the class. The Virginia Tech Hokies are the Atlantic Coast Conference champions for 2007. And there's an orange for Coach Beamer because that's where they're going to the Orange Bowl. Let's check in with Bonnie. <laughs> 